<laughs> Watch that not work. Okay, and we are live. Welcome back, everybody, to Comics Chat Wednesday. I am your freshly cut, so fresh and so clean, clean host. Yeah, Ray who Dillon. are you? I'm I'm a new guy. I'm Day Rillin, <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm the new host. So welcome. Uh, <laughs> I've been a comic artist for twenty plus years, and in, in uh, comics, movies, video games, all kinds of stuff. We have my wife, Renee Delise here. She is the writer and artist of The Legend of Wonder Woman, Hello. which is Eisner nominated, and The Last Unicorn, which was a New York Times bestseller. And she's currently working on a very top secret, very awesome, big time. It's going to blow your minds when you find out what it is. Book. Uh, if I didn't mention she's writing and drawing it, she's in the middle of it. It's going to be awesome when we get to announce what that is. We got Brent Ingstrom here. He's been a Garbage Pill Kids painter for 17 years. He also working on Wacky Packages. And today he's working on page 100 of his graphic novel called The Rise, which I cannot wait for you guys to see. You can see some sneak peeks on his Instagram. We're also joined with our special guest, Nick Pitara, who uh, recently launched and, I guess, produced and is now holding in his hands uh, Axe Wielder John, which is such mm -hmm. a cool looking book. You've probably heard of it if you're here. Um, amazing art, such a cool looking story. All the characters look amazing and we are excited to talk with him. We've known him for quite a long time since, uh, back in the digital webbing forums days. Uh, we were just talking about that. There's so many that. people from digital webbing now, <laughs> <laughs> like a hundred. If we had a reunion, it would just be so many people. I think we should do that. That would be fun. A digital webbing reunion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But welcome, Nick. Thank you for coming on the show tonight. We're very excited to show off your stuff. Um, why don't you tell the people what else you've been doing? I know you worked on some Marvel stuff, right? With uh... Yeah, I've done a little bit of Marvel work. That's kind of I, I broke in at Marvel when I was like 25 or 26 on some anthology work. And then I didn't get any work after that for years. I ended up getting my teach, teaching degree. And uh, I got the Marvel work by entering art contests. Kind of like you know, we were all in digital webbing doing stuff, and they had like a wild storm talent search. I did that, and I was a finalist in it. And then I did oh, the nice. big break. The big break was Comic Book Resources had Comic Book Idol. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was a contest. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah it had I like two hundred. Yeah, it had like two hundred people submitted portfolios for it, and uh, they picked ten contestants, and uh, we all competed against each other. And I ended up losing that one too. But uh, Hickman saw my work right when he first started working at Marvel, and that kind of, you know, 15 years later, we still collaborate here and there. My, my big, my biggest break was uh, well, I did Red Wing miniseries, but then my big break was the Manhattan Project, which we made the New York Times bestsellers list, and I get good money on. So, um, nice. And that went for about 30 issues, and yeah, and then uh, recently. Uh, I just kind of wanted to do my own thing. I just feel like I wanted to write and draw my own stuff. And so I funded Axe Wilder John and uh, I came up with the concept when my daughter was sick in the hospital. And then I was like, man, life is short. I'm going to bet on myself. And I, I didn't, I liked it. I liked the comic. I liked the idea so much that uh, I felt beneath me to, to pitch it. Like, I'm not going to go ask, I wasn't going to go ask somebody, is it okay to make this book? I was like, I'm just going to make this book. Like, I can, my wife's a writer. I'm, you know, Hickman's always a huge help and a huge asset when it comes to writing, too. And then I can draw, so, or at least draw well enough to be published. So I was like, man, I'm just going to do it myself. And I ended up selling some of my art collection, which I always, over the years, I've collected art as, as I've come up. If I make money on my art, I always put it back and buy, usually Frank Quietly art, and uh, <laughs> which, is, which has gone up in value. So I sold some of that and just funded the book myself. And then we launched on Zoo, which is a new platform that does the fulfillment for you. And uh, we ended up, uh, yeah, breaking 200,000 bucks on it. So we did pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Let me share that. That's that's pretty exciting because Zoop was uh, still pretty new or is kind of still pretty new. And you're kind of the big project on there, right? Like. Yeah, I'm, uh, like anyway. I'm a, the big fish in the little pond right now. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like those guys a lot. It's Jordan Poloski and Eric Moss. And if anyone wants to launch their books there, they're great guys. They deal with all the printing and all the headaches and stuff. They take a they take a percent for it. But uh, for me, it was worth it. So um, they handle everything and all. And they set up like like putting me on y'all show, like during the campaign. They would reach out to all the YouTubers and stuff and really get the message oh, cool. out there. So. 
Um, oh, I didn't realize they it, did all that. That's that's cool. Yeah, yeah, they set up a lot of interviews and and they've done a lot of they've done a lot for us. So uh, I can't I can't recommend them enough. So yeah, it was a huge surprise at the time. Like kick, Kickstarter saw it and they reached out. Their head of publishing reached out and was like, "Hey, we'll we'll make this the featured project." But I'd already gave Zoop my word that I'd go with them. So I was oh, like, my yeah. wife was like, "Well, you got to really." Th- you got to really think about that because the feature projects usually do really well in Kickstarter. So I was yeah. like, man, and I, I'd sunk about because I, I over for whatever reason I overpay my fel- I don't overpay them. I don't think they're pay- they're paid enough, but I pay pretty good rates, and it's a hundred something page graphic novel. So I was like thirty k in the hole without taking any money for myself. Uh, and I was like, man, this is going to be a huge gamble going on Zoot, but it worked out great. Uh, yeah, yeah, it made me realize like shows like y'all. It's like I was saying before we went on air, like. If, if we can take over the means of promotion like you guys are, are doing now or and hopefully, you know, I get off my butt and do now, then we really have everything. Like we're the, we're the ones creating the product. The, the publishers are kind of hiring people now with bigger social media influences, too. At that mm-hmm. point, man, I say we do it all ourselves. So, yeah, I'm just yeah, like I, I turned 40. I turned 40 and I was just like, man, I'm, I'm doing this myself. Man. I'm not going to sit here and slave away on other people's stuff not that i've done that too much but um i don't think the page rates are enough in comics and now i own this ip which is uh, hopefully will make money for a long time i've got other deals with the property now i got an action figure and i got another big publishing thing going on with it down the line a year or two and so yeah it's it's going to be a real rewarding it's been rewarding so far but i'm hopefully i'm gonna set it up like manhattan projects where it'll make me money for hopefully the rest of my life. So, yeah, yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think, I think for sure, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, Oh, that's going to be a hit like that. <laughs> just right off the bat. It just looked like an appealing project, a really memorable character design, cool title, you know, everything was working for it. So I was like, that, yeah, that's going to be successful. No problem. <laughs> and then it is. Yeah. So, and I'm sure I could see, I could see it being a movie, you know, I could see that kind of stuff happening. So that's Man, cool I, to hear I, about I, the action figure too. Yeah, the action figures are big. <laughs> that's like a seventy thousand dollar money fit, but we'll see how that goes. I don't know how that's I don't know how that's gonna go yet, but I did uh I, like when the campaign started, like we had that pull quote from Frank Quietly, and he's a he's a buddy now, you know. I went over and visited him in Scotland and oh, uh wow, that's cool. And I would send him updates of the book, you know, when I was working on it, and he would just be like, Leave his 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 way of saying leave me alone was like, Yeah, it looks amazing. And then eventually I was like uh, can I use amazing as a pull quote? He's like, yeah, go ahead. You know? And so uh, I just did that. And we ended up getting some good pull quotes from like Bill Sinkevich. I don't think any of them read it at the time when I sent it to him, but uh, they just said, yeah, it looks great or whatever. And I kind of skimmed all those and uh, put together, you know, the trailer. And uh, I think a big thing too, like some advice, if anyone wants to advice is if you're going to crowdfund, I-, I don't think you can overshare. I think, since so many projects are not that complete when they launch, if you can show more of the work, then it feels like more substantial. Like I I shared Axel to art for like a year without saying exactly what it was. And then people always like, what is this? Who is it for? And I always knew it was going to be for myself. Um, But I think building it up and saying it over and over again, created that product awareness uh, on social media. So, yeah, no, I think you did great with that. So here's the trailer here, right? Yeah, if it works, sometimes the I use music and it gets uh, copyright struck. So hopefully it'll work. Oh yeah. Well, I'll probably I'll probably mute the music, unfortunately. But let's no, I mean, uh, show people. Oh yeah. For anybody who hasn't seen this yet, I might keep it low. Maybe that'll work. I mean, look at the art. Come on. <laughs> That's the first time he uses his axe and he bites that dude's hand off. That Black whole fight ball. scene, so cool. Yeah, that opening fight scene. I was super excited about that. Just epic. Are you able to turn I it love, up? Yeah, I love the quotes. I, I can, yeah. Just if it's it's copyright issue, maybe. But well, right. it won't get pulled off on because that's on YouTube now. It's um Basil Polidorus from Quigley Down Under. But uh, it's so it's such a weird random song that it uh, I don't think it's gonna matter. It hasn't oh, been good, pulled okay. off yet, so all right. I love 
that monster. I mean, that's just super cool. <laughs> awesome. Well done. Love it. Everybody should go follow his Instagram as well. Look at this stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this you... Godzilla. Yeah, I did My that bike. for um, Andrew McLean and uh, Jake Smith. Oh, he's going to kill me. Text me all the time and I missed up his last name. But they're doing a mini series of Godzilla. And uh, they reached out and asked me to do a cover for him. So that's awesome. What is this monster with the almost it's like new, his shoulder pads and stuff? Yeah, his name's Zeus Zeusporo, and he uh because I got I had to read all the scripts before I did the cover. And what he does, it's not a really good he like chokes the other uh kaiju and he like shoots spores into their mouths and he oh, I don't know if I'm spoiling the, the thing, but he, he controls oh, yeah. them. I think I think the first issue came out, so it's fine. Yeah. But uh but I didn't really get that choke, like it really should have sunk in like into his skin, you know. It's kind of a half-assed grab right there, you know what I mean? So I could have done a little better, but I liked I like drawing the monster a lot. So yeah, yeah, that's a cool looking monster. That's funny how we always are like, I could have done that better. Like, look at this awesome cover. You're like, ah, it could have been better. <laughs> yeah, my Godzilla was like more lizardy, and they were like, uh, I forget the copyright holder, but that's like it had to be the original gray suit. Like, so then I had to go back and make it like the googly eyed. So it was like a weird in between on that one. So yeah, yeah. Hey, real quick, I want to say hi to the chat because we had some people in here waiting. If man, thank you again for showing up. He says, "How many gates would a gatekeeper keep if a gatekeeper could keep gates?" <laughs> Which is a reference to hi, my yes, comic man. book gatekeeper. And he would keep as many gates as a gatekeeper. I don't know how to do the the backwards thing, but just one really. Yes, yeah, just the one. <laughs> okay, just one gate then. Keeps that, he keeps that gate. Well, now you spoiled Canyon it. Canyon City. Well, I mean, that's not too spoily. <laughs> and said, "Oh, and how do you guys stay up so late, uh, especially with kids?" Yeah, we just um, one night we, a week. <laughs> one night a week, and then we're just zombies the next day, and mm -hmm. let our kids fend for themselves, and whatever. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we uh, we actually take turns the next day. Uh, taking little naps so that we can make it through the day okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, we're definitely staying up way later than we should be. You're mm -hmm. saying uh, it reminds me of Arse Face from Preacher. Oh yeah, I kind of see what you mean. Mm -hmm. But like, way cool and tough. Here's someone saying, do you think 20 16-year-olds with metal bats could beat a single silverback gorilla in a fight? <laughs> hmm. Uh, no. no way. No, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> and hello, call me Duke. Welcome to, to the chat. I think that's the first time, time, time I've seen that name in here. Mm -hmm. But thank you guys all for coming. If you haven't already subscribed and liked and all those things, make sure to do that so you don't miss these mm -hmm. amazing shows every week. Hey, we got mm -hmm. Alan Ch Childers. Now I'm going to mess it up again. Is it Childers Hi, or Childers? Childers, 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 right? Childers, Childers right? Childers. I think I remember You're here. Right. You're here and we appreciate it. And he says nope to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. Another live like. Do you have your books with you, Nick? Like the ones yeah, that they, yeah. The yeah, yeah. The sample the samples came in. So I, I mm. brought them up. But so this Let's is uh that. so the artist on this, he's painted mm. all five volumes because it's a five volume series. So this is the first one. So he's done a portrait of every one of the main characters for each volume. This is obviously mm -hmm. Axe Mulder John. When I first got this uh, drawing in uh, here, uh, to me, he looked like a bloody stubbed toe. <laughs> you know, it just looks so <laughs> gnarly. But uh, the note I gave him is I wanted like that thousand yard stare. And I mentioned mm -hmm. like when my, my dad's a construction worker and in the morning we would be running around and kind of like you said with your kids, when you're a zombie in the morning, you're just drinking coffee and, staring off into the distance like the modern the modern man who's going to go out and you know conquer the yeah. day so i mentioned that yeah, to yeah. dawson I, I just think he nailed it like like john is so intense he's almost crying in that which i freaking love um yeah that looks that looks amazing i love i love what you did there you, you put like a gloss on the on the wound that yeah cool. spot, yeah the spot gloss on the wound and then we uh i hired him to do the epilogue sequences in each chapter he's on chapter three now 
So he's done, uh, or he's about to be on chapter four. Um, so then, then the other cover, which we did as a retailer exclusive, uh, and that that this one's my cover. And on this one, we just put spot gloss on all the blood. And so, yeah, oh, uh, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, oh, so oh, where'd you God, get the gonna... idea for him? Like, how you know, where'd that come from? So, the idea for John is that, uh, I always love the idea of my, my chair is uh old and it just shrinks, so I'm just gonna gradually start shrinking <laughs> with you guys. Um, I used to have a chair that did the same thing, that's funny. So, I love like, uh, to me, the and I, I don't, I don't grow a good one, but uh, people. Men with big mustaches is to me like the most machismo thing, you know, and <laughs> yeah. uh, and with John, I had the idea that he was going to be this super alpha male character, but he's going to get taken down a peg. I, he couldn't just be one drumbeat note of like alpha male murdering. That's what the that's what it is. But in the story, there's a little bit of a softer side going on and a couple twists that really bring him down a peg. So I thought it would be a really cool design to take a mustache and just break it in half. And so if you look at cool characters like Two-Face, there's all these villains with cool scars or anti-heroes with cool scars. And I was like, man, no one's ever just taken that and just gone all the way. And I know yeah. like, I know Jeff Darrow didn't, didn't like it, but if you take someone's nose off, there's obviously a nasal patches there. <laughs> and I didn't draw yeah. that because I didn't think the booger holes, I didn't think like the booger <laughs> hole would sell, look too much like a zombie. Yeah, so like later in the comic, whenever he gets his wound, he's gonna like carterize it and smash his face down. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make an excuse for it. But yeah, so the idea oh, was that right, yeah. uh, when I was drawing it for the first time, I um, I was in the NICU and my daughter was having all these complications. She had a stomach surgery when she was first born, and she had like oh, a little no. colostomy bag and all this stuff that was going on with her. She's had she's had con reconstructive surgery since, and she's all fixed up or relatively fixed up. But when we were waiting in the NICU for months, we I would start a drawing and uh, I looked down and I'd drawn this big bulky guy, which isn't abnormal for a comic book artist, you know, but I was drawing like the little babies all over him and oh shit, you know, but whatever. There was like a bunch of babies on his back and I was like, man, I like the juxtaposition of uh, over masculinity with some feminin femininity or softness. And I yeah. really liked that. It, it, I, I really thought it was cool. So then that kind of was like, well, what am I, what am I going to do with this concept? And because the con because the story came to me in a, like a really, uh, I guess, desperate time, I was like, I'm going to take this seriously. I'm not just going to let this be one of the random sketches that are just lost in the room somewhere. Like, I'm what's this story? And I said, well, let me figure that out. So, yeah, I, I am too. And and then when I came up with the story, I liked it enough. To where I was like, uh, I'm just, it, I'm not going to go to Image. They would publish it or Dark Horse or anywhere and ask them to publish it. And so what I did was I just, I'm just going to make it, you know? And I did that. And then I worked on it for like two years and got most of it done before the campaign launched. We had some complications with printing and I went through six colorists because my stuff is so detailed. I also drew the book, like every panel was on its own 11 by 17. So it was like incredibly detailed. So the colorists and the flatters would just, they would, I, would, I destroyed them, you know? I ended up having to jump in and color at the end myself. But we got oh, it no all kidding. done. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, Mike Garland's the main colorist. He's my main guy, but I think I sent him into a depression for a little while with how detailed yeah. I drew the pages. Because they were like, all the pages were like 36 inches tall because they were 11 by 7. Because the, the, the comics laid out, in a very cinematic way, it's all one third panels or double page mm -hmm. spreads. So it's all kind of like you turn your phone sideways. It's kind of like that ratio. And uh, I did that on purpose because that's how I saw it when I was laying it out. But oh, yeah, you so I was like, man, I'm each, just going to draw this 11. Yeah, you, you each drew panel each on its own 11 by 17. Page, right? yeah. yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. I so mean, each one it would, would be in, in like. Gallery. Yeah, I don't. It's not that we did good on the art sales, though. Like the, we did like a hundred k on the art sales, which was really nice. And oh, wow. thanks to Felix Comic Art, my art rep, for that. Mm. And uh, and obviously the the patrons of Comic Art, they they were huge for me. But there was this thing where it was like uh, I wanted it to be a spectacle, like another another thing to make you stand out from the crowd in the crowdfunding space is is a good thing, you know. 
and I don't think many people can say their pages are half the size of a door, you know, because they were all, yeah. you know, 36 inches tall. And uh, yeah. so that that was big. And then I started, I really like the marketing part, like thinking about the, con instead of, I think there's this problem in the with like worrying about the big two or us worrying about getting work or if we see decisions that they make that we don't necessarily agree with, we're like, well, that's our future. How are we going to work and make this work exactly? And I was like, man, if I could just go into the crowdfunding space, it's the wild west. Like all of a sudden my detailed art stands out, you know, all mm -hmm. of a sudden my weird, so I draw weird, you know, it looks like I'm super high when I, I'm not super high when I work, but it's all like weird and squiggly and crazy. Um, but people edit, like I have to, so, you know, if I go submit to an editor that's 26 years old and I'm a 40 year old man and I'm really proud of the way I draw, it just doesn't feel right anymore. You know, like I, I'm not, yeah. not going to ask permission to make what I want. And then sure enough, since I made it and the book exists and the, or the PDF does, man, I've gotten so many offers that I would have never gotten if I would have just pitched John with five pages and they'd be like, who are, who are you? They might know who I am a little bit, but not really. Mm -hmm. I'm just one of the Nicks that work with Hickman, Nick Dragata, Nick Patera, the two Nicks. But now I'm the writer artist, Nick. And I had to consciously make myself that thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I had to yeah. go in. I think that's my brother. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Pat P. Maybe, oh, maybe not. Go. But, uh, um, but I had to consciously like rebrand myself and, 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 and bet on myself. And that, it, it, you guys know this well in comics we've done that you know we could have all gotten teaching jobs so maybe you guys already have teaching jobs i got a teaching degree but i've yeah. always rolled the dice on the on the next gig you know or the next mm -hmm. thing and uh the, so this was like a bigger gamble because it was mm -hmm. two years worth of, of build up but uh so far it's been really good uh it's been i've been really blessed and i'm super thankful to the fans who supported it and i'm, I'm over ordering 1500 copies so so please keep buying it whenever I open the campaign again. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, it's a real rewarding feeling, super nervous feeling whenever you do crowdfunding. But I, I think the final piece really for for all of us is if we take over the means of promotion, then we we have everything, you know, yeah. because yeah, yeah. at that point, if you got companies like Zoop who are going to help fulfill the book and, and deal with the printers and stuff that, that takes that off our back and then we could then we can come in and just come and make our pitches on each other's shows. And then the network is ours because we, we have right. the means of creation. We're the artists, you know? And that's the thing too. Like I love, I love writers and I love Jonathan Hickman, but like, uh, this is, this is, this is my last pitch and it's a little spicy, but my, what really made me think like, can I write this book is Alan Moore, Grant Morrison, Robert Kirkman, Rick Remender, uh, all those people. Uh, Donny Cates, all those fantastic writers, they have mm -hmm. one thing in common. Do you know what it is? What's what? that? They're all failed cartoonists. They're all failed. Oh, yeah. All failed. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Each oh, one wanted yeah. to be a comic book artist. Each one oh, each okay. one wanted to be a comic book artist. Yeah, yeah. Like they always show oh, their wow. sketches off. So I so I said, man, all all I am is those guys with less quit in me. So let's do it. Like I'm gonna do yeah, it too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. And that's my that's my bridge burning sentiment that uh, will never let me work with a writer again. So, so we'll see. <laughs> that's cool. But, um, that's cool. I like that. But uh, I just figured if they could do it, we could do it too. And there and so what I like, I bought on writing, Save the Cat, all the screenplay books and all that. And I just fell in love with storytelling and pacing and figuring it all out. That's great. Yeah. Once yeah, you start so doing that, you can't go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was really hard to go I know. back to doing scripts and stuff by the way pat p is now calling you so old so that yeah i know I'm old. that sounds like a brother kind of thing to say yeah we also had um yeah so uh you guys might have seen this already but if man was saying he doesn't usually like gimmick comic uh, gimmick covers but those covers rock they they definitely do yeah the the choice of of just having the blood like that is is perfect mm -hmm. and you're saying that cover looks sick we got uh it kind of looks like cliff calvin from hell is that uh from the book from hell or who's cliff calvin hmm. let me look that up and uh saying those stories can break through the emotional turmoil you got to go all in yeah so uh, mm -hmm. okay can i ask how, uh, your daughter is she doing okay now that's oh yeah she's good terrifying. She 
you know, as a parent. Yeah, she's good. Like medical wise, she's like lost some of her intestines. So she poops a little more than the average kid, but that's about it. <laughs> you know, not, 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 not nothing too bad compared to where we were. Uh, yeah, she's, she's doing great now. I'm glad. Oh, that's good. Good. How old is she now? She's four. She's four. Four. So like I, I, we have, so I came up with the first sketch of John. Uh, and then when she was about, when she turned three, I was like, I'm going to start working on it. So I started working on it officially uh, then, and now she's four now. So, yeah. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad it's nice. Right. Having, it's nice having that kind of as a, a, you know, something to compel you to keep working on it too, because it's connected mm -hmm. to your daughter and the time you went through and all that. Like, I mean, yeah, it's special. Yeah. Since then I had another daughter. So I'm like, uh, I'm like a girl dad now, you oh, know, okay. like I, I love hey, arm wrestling. I love football. <laughs> I love all this manly stuff. And God's like, nah. Yeah. You're getting you're getting two girls. <laughs> I'm like, oh man. I don't I don't know what to, thank God I got a great wife who is very good with them and comes from a matriarchal family. And I was like, girls I don't are really harder like it. than boys. You're I in know. for it. I mean, yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. We've got yeah. three boys and one girl. And I, I've got a buddy who all he wanted uh, not all he wanted, but he wanted a boy really bad and he just has four girls. So <laughs> he just kept having girls. But oh, here's Cliff Calvin. So um now I get who he's talking about, and I agree. Let me see here. How do I? From Cheers. Yeah, yeah. And there's actually, let me, oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Hold on. Good. I'm, I'm having to use two different browsers, browsers tonight because my um, StreamYard just didn't want to accept my camera tonight. So it's making things a little, a little wonky, but I'll get it figured out here. Uh, so how once. long did it take you to finish Axe Wielder, John? Like, it, how, it's a, how it's long a, is it? And it's um, the the actual hardcover is 168 pages, but it's filled with a bunch of extras. Um, between me and the DOS epilogue, it's like 120. Uh, there's some design pages thrown in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there he is. There's old Axe Wielder. Yeah, got to beef up. Which a I bit. gotta say does remind me of the cover. That that stare yeah. that you're doing, yeah, yeah. look in his eyes. He's good. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I mean, I'm a lot faster than two years for like 100 something pages or 100 pages, but I drew them so big that it was just taking forever. So I I, let, I used to yell of, is that me now or no on the Echo or no? Uh, I'm a little. No. Um, was it or no? Or that could just be me? No. I guess it's gone now. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's gone. I think it's gone. Okay. I'm always worried about Streamyard. Was, yeah, it was probably Renee's fault. Problem. But yeah, drawing it so big, it just took forever. And I had I went to Japan with a bunch of other artists like five years ago, six years ago, and we uh, bought all these cool like nibs and dip pens, and I started falling in love with those. And then on Axwater, I was like, I can't keep experimenting. I've got to go back to my microns. So I only bought zero zero three and zero zero five microns. That's it. And when I bought those, um. I, I, I limit myself to just use those zero zero three and the two smallest microns and yeah. uh, drew it all oversized. That's why my line weights are so weak. It, it looks like, you know, by the time it's shrunk down, like it really needs color because it's all wispy uh, yeah. by the time it gets down there. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, if you ever need a backup colorist, I would have a blast coloring your mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's just yeah, so, man, I'm all, so cinematic, you know, and I'm always looking for colors, dude. Uh, don't be yeah, mad yeah. if it, we're going to have a bad relationship. <laughs> This is what happens. People want to color it, and then it turns into a bad relationship after a year. It's too many, <laughs> too many details. But uh, we yeah, got a great yeah. flatter now. Her name's Sheena, and she's fantastic. And uh, Mike is back, and uh, I got an assistant now. Uh, his name's Ken, and he's been coloring me for a little while. He came in and helped when we were tag teaming, finishing up Axe Wilder. And uh, so I've been training him up now too. So we'll see how it goes. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. We'll see yeah. how it goes. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm into detail, so and mm -hmm. Renee um, is quite the perfectionist, so I'm I'm used to kind of having to keep going in <laughs> and adding stuff and taking stuff away and you know all that. So hey, we I'm got uh, Wade Dylan saying uh, it's looking amazing, and I'm working on my own graphic novel right now. Following y'all makes me know it is possible. Need to grab me a copy of your book, Nick. Yeah, definitely okay. do. You're, you're going to be inspired by that book. It looks amazing. I haven't gotten Thanks, the Wade. chance to read read through the whole thing yet, um, but I've I've looked through it, you know, trying not to spoil stuff for myself because I, I get to parts and I'm like, oh man, that looks too cool, but it, it just it it looks like such a wild ride, and the, every page is just ridiculous. <laughs> I know, I love your art so much, 
It has so much feeling to it. We're the, we're, we're the opposite. You draw pretty and I draw ugly. You know what I mean? You don't draw like, ugly. No, draw I don't. Awesome. I draw kind of. No, you draw is pretty Different. ugly. <laughs> no, it's, well, I it's mean, you can draw ugly. ugly, but awesomely ugly. I'm sure yeah, I think, the, I think the most important mm -hmm. thing that you can do with in comics is like get the eyes to be alive, you know, like with the with get your characters to emote, you know, because mm -hmm. I don't know anatomy and I don't know. I just kind of make it up as I go. Um, oh, yeah. I've been trying to be a little bolder with my decision making, like trying to draw instead of the inside of the form first and all the mechanics. I've been trying to mm -hmm. work on the outside shapes more and some of the silhouettes of the characters more. To get them to read that is better. the most important part. Yeah, like the like yeah, knowing the definitely brachialis is. muscle and and crap. Like that's not. I know all that stuff, but I I know that's not the most important thing because you just get lost in the weeds. You know, knowing every tendon and and all that. If it, it's the shape, it's the feel, it's how expressive it is. There's a fantastic uh, publisher called 3D Total. I don't know if you guys have ever got any of their books. Uh, mm -hmm. They're on Amazon. They they have like a quarterly book that comes out, and it's all animators. And they break down how they do their animation work, and they all start with little thumbnails. Uh, and I, I subscribe to that book. It's only like twelve bucks. The back the back issues are very expensive, but uh, it's worth checking out because you get they, they basically break down people's process over and over again, mm -hmm. and it's always the same. It's always silhouette and shape. And before I was always so like you were saying, Ray, like oh the deltoid connects to this, and these are the <laughs> muscle fibers. But uh, it never really, it never really uh, worked all the way. That that shot there is one of my favorite cartoonists, Nick Darrington, uh, and he yeah, he, yeah. he ended up he ended up just drawing that for me for fun. And I was like, man, you're the man, Nick. Uh, I That's used to know awesome. him when he lived in Austin. We would hang out together and uh, draw at coffee shops and stuff. He surprised yeah. me with that. Yeah. So are you self-taught? Yeah, I'm self-taught, but I had a. Uh, I had a buddy go to like how I got into comics was when I was 17, I wasn't drawing or anything. And I was mm -hmm. in my last year of high school and I got moved from an English class because I had enough credits to graduate. So I stopped doing my work and I got put in a remedial reading class, but I knew how to read. So, uh, and, but in that class, there was a kid that just drew all day. So he had bad grades too. And he was mm -hmm. going to a school called the Kubert school. And I was like, he's going oh, to yeah. Kubert school. What the? And uh, <laughs> and I was like, what is this? You know, and he, like, like, he's like, you're going to school to draw? And then I had a buddy say, yeah, this guy's the best. He's the best in the district. And I was like, well, who is this guy? And his, he's my best friend today. His name's Isaac Martis. And he ended up going to Kubert school. And that got me into like going to the comic shops, reading comics. I found The Authority, which I really loved by Mark Millar and yeah, Frank yeah. Quietly. And, and so I, I was like, man, I want to draw too. And so for two years, I kind of stayed at the house and drew. And then his third year in 2003, I went up for a semester and just lived at his house and did the homework assignments and stuff. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we lived on like four mountainside drive in Dover. And, nice. and I'm from Texas. So, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, culture it was, shock it was probably, very, yeah. very much a culture shock and freezing weather and never yeah. seen snow before. And that was, uh, yeah, it that was, was fun, actually man. the first oh. time I ever left. I, I, the first time I ever left Kansas was uh, I, I went to New Jersey to have my interview for the Hubert School, and it was the middle of winter, yeah. you know, just snow piled up, you know, <laughs> and just the, the whole experience was nuts. Like seeing New York City and New Jersey and stuff for the first time, and it was it was wild. Yeah, but I want that's, that that's feeling cool, back, that man. Little... That feeling yeah. of like hope and like what the future holds, you know. Like now it's yeah, just yeah. now that we do this for a living, it's just a grind, you know. It's just yeah, like yeah. daily work, you know. Like it's always work. It's always some work. You're never mm -hmm. on time. You're never as far ahead as you want to be. Uh, mm -hmm. But I remember that feeling almost like when you get a new toy as a kid or get a new little gig where you just felt like this is going to open every door for me, you know. Yeah. And yeah. going up to the Kubert School and seeing all those dudes for two years, I would go help him move in and out. He was in the mansion. And then he got mm -hmm. into the house and uh, seeing like 30 other cartoonists. And man, that was like, you know, there's a great feeling, nostalgia feeling or something or inspirational feeling. And I'm like, there's a part of me that always still wants to go to the school. You know, like yeah, I like yeah. to go now and <laughs> kick everybody's <laughs> butt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I ended up not going, and it, but I did some of the correspondence courses. Uh, I just wasn't yeah, able I did to, to go. 
Um, and uh, I did always wonder like, oh man, what would it have been like to just be around all those artists that are like hungry to make comics and get into the industry and all that and just working nonstop around the clock on stuff, you know? Um, yeah, even now it's like, oh man, <laughs> what, what would it be like to go there now? <laughs> let's all go. Yeah, let's all join. <laughs> So we would rock, dude. We would rock if we went down. <laughs> we get straight A's. Yeah. We'll rule that place. <laughs> we could probably all be teachers there at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you were saying you, you didn't find comics until you were in college. Is that is that right? Yeah, when I was 17, as I wasn't reading them, when I when I tried to read comics, I collected baseball cards as a kid. And in the baseball card shop that I would go to, they had comics. And then at the time, it was like Death of Superman was big and right. the image stuff was big. And I would go, but I um, I would pick up a book or something, but I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't figure out sequential storytelling for the life of me. Like, I would just be oh, like, yeah. is, this really, is this really happening? You know, like, am I supposed to? There was something about, like, the art stealing from my own imagination where, like, the artist just wasn't good enough to hold my... Like I think Mobius is one my probably my all time favorite, and he like his imagination is so vast that he can hold our imaginations within his own. Like I want to read his stories, and I think some of those image guys were so splashy that when they're standing stiff and they're all like rib, you know, perfect muscles, romanticized, but then there's a mm -hmm. bunch of words coming out of their mouth that doesn't really go with the the moment. I just yeah. like okay, I, I didn't get it. And then uh when I finally got with my buddy, he was showing me stuff and I saw the authority and I think quietly's a master, he's like on the Mobius tree. And then I, I found his work and then I found Mobius and Jeff Darrow and all the guys I kind of draw, you know, Kmart version of. Uh I found those guys and I was like, Man, I love the pacing of the storytelling. And uh then then when I read the book and it was like Midnighter and the Authority and you know they're the analogs for a gay Batman and gay Superman, and they were killing the villains. I was like, I was 17, man. Like, this is the coolest comic I've ever read. Dude. This is awesome. You know? Yeah. And uh, so then I was like, man, people like what well, you can you can die in comic books. Like, people are they're killing each other, they're killing the villains. I was like, mm -hmm. what is obviously it was like trite if you're a longtime reader, but for me it was new, you know. Um, so yeah, that got me hooked. And then I just started drawing. I bought a draft. Like once I went up to the Kubert school with him, uh, we drove up, you know, every year, or every semester mm -hmm. or every six months, whenever he would get out of school, I saw they all had drafting tables. So I was like, I guess I got to buy a drafting table. And then I had to do this. And then I saw there was a blurb and wizard about digital webbing. So I signed on digital webbing oh, and, then, and then it all kind of started like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That yeah. place changed so many lives. <laughs> like just yeah, that one little forum. Yep. man that's a really interesting way that you got into comics and drawing and everything like through just meeting somebody who was going to the Kubrick school and then that captured your attention you know um, oh, I got I'll, into I'll comics a little I... late too but but like that that's even I think more interesting because you were you were you know not even on that path at that point and then finding that at that time that's 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 neat yeah I got lucky like not turning in the work in my whatever higher level class then that was like a blessing because me i would have never met him would have i would have been a construction worker my my whole family my brother's an elevator in the elevator union my dad's electrical union my other brother's electrical union my uncle's a plumber and i was doing that kind of like work in the summer and stuff for side money and i probably would have done that too if i hadn't found comics so yeah yeah you would so have what age were you what age were you Ray? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i would ever <laughs> Yeah, I was um, 13 when I when I found comics. I I was a uh, I've told the story probably a few times on here now, but um I was uh my sister was getting on a bus to go to Texas to do a missionary thing, and um so it was kind of a weird sad day for me. Um and as she left, I turned around and saw a comic rack, and there was Rob Liefeld drawing a uh, chapel, and like some uh, war blade and like stuff like that, and I was just like, what is that? Like I, I went from Garfield to that. And it just blew my mind. There were skulls and guns and knives and, you know, all this fog and like all this cool stuff. And it just really captured me. So that was the first time I bought comics. Um, and then that was it. Like, I was just like, oh, well, that's what I'm going to do with my life. Because <laughs> it just I had never seen anything like it. You know, I just hadn't 
paid attention to comics. Like I'd seen Superman and Batman stuff on, you know, movies and whatever, but just never, never saw comics like that. And, and just seeing the detail and the horror and the action and all that, it really got me. So mm-hmm. that was it. That's awesome. How old were you, Renee, when you got into comics? Uh, probably about nine. Just getting Betty and Veronica and the, you know, the grocery checkout line, like all those little digests that they had. And then they had like a, a rack nearby that was actual comics. I kind of migrated over there. So probably like nine, ten. Were you all drawn at the time too? Whenever y'all oh, yeah. is that when y'all first started drawing? Yeah. I've I've been drawn since I can hold the pencil. <laughs> yeah. So. What about you, Brent? When did you when was your hook into comic? Uh yeah, as long as I can remember. My older brother, he's three years older. He he collected them. So I've just always mm-hmm. Before I could read, I was looking for them. So, so, so I've, I've I've always had them in my life. So you're a hundred yeah. pages in. Your new book's called The Rise. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. That's a lot of work. How long is it? How, don't tell me it's like four hundred pages. Tell me it's, you're getting close. One hundred fifty-six <laughs> pages. All right, so you're you're like two thirds. But they're big pages. They're like <laughs> yeah. what twelve panels per yeah. page? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's mm. each page That's is a lot. twelve. Panels and- yeah, I would say you, those uh, count as two. What are you planning on doing with it? Do you have a publisher lined up already, or uh, what are you going to do? No, I was kind of like you. I just kind of want to finish it and then work out that. <laughs> like, I wanted to just – it's just something I do on the side, sort of. So, I, like, I don't want anyone – I don't want deadlines. and. <laughs> so, I – but I, I was just talking to another artist today, and he mentioned Zoo. So, I, like, I uh, – oh. but so when I saw that, it maybe Zoo. Yeah, you can well, do I, that, I'll, man. I think I, I'll help you. I've learned a lot. I learned a lot about that the landscape of crowdfunding. So, um, we'll talk. We'll talk after or uh, or something, and uh, or when you're closer, and yeah. I'll tell you everything I've learned. You know, good, bad. Everything has its pluses and minuses. Uh, Zoop works out for me well. Um, it seems to me like your Instagram. You have a ton of followers, right? Yeah. So, like, you you've already got the means of promotion probably down a better base for it than even what I had, you know, to start. So, um, but there's, I think both, all the platforms have their own plus and minuses and I've got to meet a lot of the upper people at, mm. at, at all the places. Uh, I, I personally do love Zoot and they're fantastic. Uh, but, but there's other options out there too. So like I, I've tried to recruit for Zoop mm. a lot. But uh, but I've run into a lot of people, a lot of good people on the other platforms too. So yeah, I have some publishers in mind, but I there's not like nothing set in stone because I haven't pursued it. So. That's awesome. Here's someone that hears if if man saying, "Whoa, Brent talks." <laughs> <laughs> Brent Brent speaks when it's something important. Yeah. <laughs> what uh what brush are you inking with? Um, it's a his favorite brush. Yeah. Zero. A zero? Yeah. What brand? Is it Kalinsky Tiny. or Raphael or what? It's a Cotman, Windsor Newton. Yeah, I couldn't get over like everyone's like, you gotta use the two. You gotta use the two. I was like, no, I like it smaller than the two. The number yeah. two is like the popular one. Yeah, two is yeah. too big. Like I mean I yeah. might like fill in blacks with the two. <laughs> big space. Yeah, that's what I trained on was the two. I, I, Brent was the first artist I ever saw that was like, eh, no, I don't want to. I want to use a. Di- I want to use a smaller brush. And I was like, oh wait, you can do that. You can. You can. You don't have to use the one that everyone says to use. What? I think. I think. I usually go to zero zero. Hey, the wow. book looks like it'd be like with you. Are you hand lettering it too? Yeah. Man, that's crazy. It looks like it'd be a fan of graphics book to me. You know I what I mean? That's, yep. that's, you, yeah. that's who I've always wanted to print it, but I. Yep. Fan of graphics. Dude, it looks like. Get on this thing. It looks like their material. Have you ever, this isn't like your work, but have you ever seen the, my, one of my favorite cartoonists is Jason. He just does the cat face people. He's a fan of graphics guy, I think. Um, but his name is just Jason. He's a Norwegian cartoonist, but he does these like really great. He did a book called I Killed Adolf Hitler. And it's like fantastic. It's about a time traveling assassin who tries to go back in time and kill Hitler. And it messes up his relationship with his girlfriend. And it's like a big drama, but He's like to me. Have you, you guys have oh, read Scott McCloud? I've, 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 I've seen this guy. I, didn't, I wasn't placing him, but yeah, I've definitely seen this. No, guy. dude, he's he's his storytelling's fantastic because it's all deadpan, 
It's uh, if you, have y'all read Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics or mm-hmm. remember yeah. it at all? Th- there's yeah, a part yeah. where he starts drawing himself more realistically, and all of a sudden you're yeah. aware of the messenger and not the message. And I think Jason gets that concept very well. It's like you project yourself into his characters because they're just icons or animal mm-hmm. face icons. And uh, he's got such good deadpan humor or quiet human moments in his stuff. Um, but anyway, I, I, I like I like a lot of fanographic stuff, and it, it looks like your material would fit in yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's who I've always wanted to print at. So yeah, uh, yeah, they got they got to do it. It it would be a perfect book for them. So do it, fanographics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> be silly not to. Look at this thing. That's awesome, man. I love that the comic inside of a comic. Looking good. There, I don't. Well, I don't want to say too. I was about to say something, but I won't. I won't say it. You can't know anything about this book until you buy it. <laughs> what can we say about it, Brent? Like, how far? <laughs> how far can we describe it? <laughs> I mean, I've I've talked about it a little bit. It's, it's a it's a diary that I found. It's a guy's day to day life for five years. So it's a it's a true story. It's really <laughs> is, a special. Is, 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 is that real? Is that yeah. real? The, yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. That uh, is awesome. I also went your route where you're saying I had to make it really cartoony because it was such a mundane, like not not boring, but just kind of a it would be it would be way mm-hmm. too depressing if it was a realistic drawn comic. <laughs> so I wanted to talk. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh man, if that was done like real realistic, you'd be yeah, you'd be depressed. But no, like I've read the whole thing and and I like care about this character and you know, like I, I just can't wait for other people to read it because it's it's like you just get so engaged in this world because of his drawing, like the way he designed this character. Um, it just I don't know, it's just awesome. <laughs> and look at how he does dude, the that's, name. I think it's gonna be if you can market that right, dude. Like, first off, I think the name's great. The rise sounds like a great title, yeah, but he, also he like titled it, a pound. I didn't even title What's that. He titled Dude, that's the diary awesome. the rise. So it was like <laughs> it was Dude, that's to, awesome. like rise to fame. Oh really? Um, Dude, so like I that's such a great like to me the publisher hat cuts on, you know? And it's mm-hmm. like, dude, this a found a found diary illustrated, <laughs> that's a seller, you know? Like that's yeah, that's totally. a good hook. Like there's that it's like, like the genius, right? Yeah, no, I think that's I think it's been a fantastic uh, hook and now now like you instantly want to read it you know mm-hmm. um, uh yeah as a pub, like you, you're gonna put these mini hats on whenever you do it ourselves you know the marketing mm-hmm. side or the drawing side or the editing side or whatever we do but if if i got a book that was like a found diary that's illustrated and with the right pitch that would be yeah killer. Yeah, I want to read it it's now. Just, you know, so totally. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's like the the set of circumstances that had to exist for Brent to be the one to find this diary and think it's significant enough to want to make this project. It's like just a one in a lifetime chance thing. You know, it's it's gonna yeah be awesome. the de- the dedication to the diary too. So there had to be something in your head with the wheel spinning when you read when you started reading it. And you're like, this would be a mm-hmm. cool a cool story. You know, yeah. so yeah. And it's it's pretty it's an interesting story. I mean, it's set in the '80s. It's and it's just a cool time period. And he's a professor, so it's like he's pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Dude, that's a, awesome, it's man. Really, you gotta get a, you gotta get a hold of Fan of Graphics. I wish I knew somebody there to put you in. Uh, Do you know anyone there now or no? Um, a little bit, but not not yeah, not really. I mean, I know artists who have worked there, so I could maybe. I I have a feeling they're going to end up coming calling because it, it just is always, the perfect book for them. That's yeah. what I've always envisioned doing it. But, uh, By the way, this, yeah, this is a book that I, I keep forgetting to bring up on stream, but the, Brent did a Weird Al Yankovic uh, comic. He did stories for it. It's sort of a giant, oversized kind of kind of book. And um, uh, it's taking the lyrics of uh, the, the Mr. Popeil song and, and turning it into a story. And his art on it was just so cool. I keep forgetting to tell people to go get that. It's on Amazon and stuff and wherever else. And um, was, wasn't that nominated. up for an Eisner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Eisner nominated as well. So, mm-hmm. dude, that's awesome, awesome man. Awesome, awesome. Who uh, did did you write that one too or no? Um, on the Weird Al. It was. It's just word for word his uh, lyrics from the songs. Like they they 
they pick different artists to illustrate the songs. Uh, we could pretty much do whatever we wanted as long as we kept his lyrics, didn't change his lyrics. Mm-hmm. So it was like, I don't know. It was kind of a that's, weird writing process, but <laughs> that's super cool, man. But oh, I, I love your, I love your cartoon, man. Been illustrating this diary for the past <laughs> three years. So, so. That's such, that's such a commitment, dude, to be like, I'm going to draw this dude's diary. You know, <laughs> have you ever done any like research on his family or anything like that? Or yeah, um, he didn't, he didn't have any fat, like he never had kids or anything. So there was no like, and yeah. I don't have a, it just was like a diary and a, in a bat, batch of books, so I don't really know anything about him personally, other than yeah, five year block of his life. Yeah, here's the diary. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, it's yeah, a good really block so of cool. time, too. <laughs> five years, mm-hmm. he never missed We're a day, he wrote it every single day. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's what's so cool, too, is that he that guy was dedicated to this rise, like mm-hmm. you know, without saying whatever, like this time period and this diary. And was writing in it every day. So it's like, again, it's the perfect person to find that diary. Because <laughs> Brent is the one that would actually put the work in to make it happen. I have it all I have it all yeah. drawn. I'm just inking it right now, but the whole the whole thing's laid out and so it's mm-hmm. I'm getting there. On, on the way. <laughs> so exciting. Page one hundred today. Woo! Yeah. That's huge, man. Oh, did you finish it? I didn't finish 100. page 100. I started page 100. Nope. Yep. That's exciting. Uh, that's that's so significant because I, I remember when he, he was working on it, when he kind of first got really geared into it, he was like, oh, man, it's just it feels like it's going to take forever. And I was like, I bet you're going to get it done <laughs> real fast because I've known him for so long and I see how he works. And once he gets on something, he'll just like crank it out. And it, it, it's mm. gone that way. He's, he's just been kicking butt mm. on it. Been, so it did. Uh, did this artist do? Um, yeah, D- Das Pastoris. Did he do uh, some pa- interior pages too? Yeah. So he does the epilogue sequences in each volume, and uh, so and he hand paints everything. Uh, he's way better than me. Uh, I, I've loved no. this stuff for years. He did some Marvel shorts, but he worked with uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky uh, oh, in, yeah. the Met, in the Meta Baron stuff, and uh, cool. his. I bought a page. He did a Punisher short story, which I freaking loved. Did a Wolverine short story, which I loved. So I've been following his work for a while. Bought some of his original art. And his rep in the United States is Jose de la Rubia, the colorist. Um, And so we reached out to Jose. My editor, Chris Stevens, reached out and said, you know, is it possible to get him to do the cover? That turned into him doing every character. And then that turned into... He was in contract negotiations with a really big publisher that was time up for like years painting a graphic novel. So he said, well, he'll take on some short story work if you have any. I was like, well, I guess I'm going to hire this guy to do my epilogue sequences. Nice. So, And I've already written all of John out or plotted it out. Like I, before I started drawing, <clears throat> that was like a frustrating thing with me in the industry, realizing how slapstick some of the stories are. They're like, oh, we'll just yeah. do this or we'll just do this. I'm like, dude, I am drawing these pages gigantically i'm using tiny little pens it takes me 30 hours to draw a page or whatever it takes me two or three pages a week and i'm like and you you can't take the time to figure out what's going to happen on page six (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) so when i started john when i was writing for myself i was like i knew i know the last scene the last page so it wasn't hard for me to come up with the epilogue sequences for all five volumes so so yeah we got that's so I'm keeping him busy now. Uh, he's expensive to work with, but uh, he makes my, mm-hmm. he's the first artist that I've ever written for, which I think is super cool too. Like, uh, yeah. uh, and he's been, he's been published since heavy metal. He's an older guy now. I think he's in his mid sixties and uh, uh, he's a, he's a blast to work with. He just disappears. And then like six months later, he shows up with like gorgeous art, you know? Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I've, I've heard uh, that a lot from some of the uh, like like heavy metal and meta barons artists like that that group of like they're all kind of from the same group they all seem to to work in the same whatever um, but yeah they all kind of disappear and then come back with yeah, yeah so yeah. it's like you can count on them to get it done but it's like you don't hear it because they're just being creative I guess for that time yeah That's and in that cool. time like it caught he I, I he I, like I'll, I'll follow him sometimes. Or he'll post like a little a little snippet of a sketch or something, and I want to see if it's from my story because I'm like, crap, yeah. I gotta pay the, I gotta pay this guy soon, <laughs> you know. So yeah, yeah. I'm cool with 
I'm cool with him taking his time. I'm like, take your time, dude. Please take your time so I can save up. But uh, yeah, he's a he's a blast to work with, and and he's asked me. I wish I had more money because he's asked me to do more actual to work. And uh, but uh, right now I can't afford him, so we're gonna wait for the yeah, next yeah. The next book to come out. So yeah, nah, I bet it'll happen. So uh, we got somebody in a different chat that doesn't show up on StreamYard, but he's asking, what's the email again to send art for a review? Um, anybody watching who doesn't know, we do review of uh, subscriber art. Uh, they send us their work, and, and you can send mm-hmm. it to newquestcomics at gmail.com, and we'll we'll check it out. We might review it on the stream. and You should put it on the us, banner. Give you the best. Yeah, I should do that. <laughs> you can send pinups, too. Here. I <laughs> thought that might be fun to do some pinups. But we yeah, should probably yeah, we... start the first one. Yeah, yeah, we should mm-hmm. get there, yeah. You're going to help so, us out, um, right, yeah, Nick? Tonight we're going to be doing... Sorry, go ahead. Hmm? What are you oh, guys that... going to do? Draw... You're going to make me draw? I don't know if I want to draw. We'll see this. What are y'all going to do? <laughs> or, well, right after. now we're going to do some art review. So we're going to be looking at other people's art, like aspiring creators or, or like, you know, mm-hmm. new creators that are, um, you know, looking to expand their work. And we're going to try to give them some, some advice where we can. Oh yeah, um, I, lo- I love doing that stuff. I never, I like to see the people in person because I got to gauge like where they're at. And I like to know like sometimes I like to know their age and what they want out of comics. Sometimes people I don't want to like be crushing to somebody, but if like my Ken who comes over to my house, my my assistant, my buddy who comes over, like after he started coming to the house, then he went to the Kubert School, won the won the school the Kubert School scholarship for three years in a row, came back, mm-hmm. and now he's starting to color in comics and getting more professional work. But like that kid, I was hard on, man. I was like ruthless, <laughs> but some people are like, you know, I don't, I don't want to be ruthless. You know, I want to be nice. Yeah. To you, so. We we do try to um, be a little gentle and encouraging more than like, this is terrible. Cause a lot of people do have, you know, they, they aren't maybe as confident with their work yet, or, or maybe they're feeling like they're struggling. So we, we do try to, just be as helpful as possible without tearing them apart too much. Cause we remember when we came into digital webbing, mm-hmm. like Renee got some really critical, you know, <laughs> review and stuff. And like some of that could crush people's hopes. They're like, Oh, I'm just terrible. I'll never you remember, you remember those for years. I had one with uh, mm-hmm. my worst review was at cross gen. Uh, <laughs> Bart Sears was the oh, art director wow. there. And oh, he said, boy. uh, He's like, you need to draw 200 more. And then, you know, two, he said, you need to draw 200 more pages before you show your work to anyone. And I, and I had, Ouch. I like, dude, I was, it would take me like six months to get five new pages at the time. So I was yeah. like, basically you have a whole lifetime before you, uh, yeah, you, yeah. Should, you should get any work. And, uh, but he was right though. It took about 200 more pages of samples before I got pro work. So he wasn't yeah, wrong, yeah. but man, like for me, I, I was like, well, I'm going to prove him wrong. I'm going to go and draw better. So I used it to fuel me to draw better anyway, and he was right anyway. But I think that is the maybe too hard because if that could like yeah. crush somebody, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because when you don't have that, like for Bart Sears, he's done probably thousands of pages. So like saying do two hundred more pages doesn't sound crazy to him. But like yeah. to someone who's only done five or ten pages, you're like, oh, so never, <laughs> yeah. I'll never get. Yeah, it. yeah. I can't even imagine doing two hundred. I just pages jumped yet, right so. in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like I think yeah. my first, like aside from when I was a kid, but I think like my first pages, it was just like for a project, <laughs> you know, so you learn on the job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me too. I got hired pretty early on and I, I wasn't um, ready necessarily for professional work, but you know, I, I learned so much from doing that first project and it was for free even, but like, which, you know, new artists try not to work for free if you can help it, but I did it. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> You're learning at that time and, and stuff. So it, it kind of works out. But oh, let me see. I got another comment here. Oh, if man saying to get Nick in on the left handed no reference sketches. That is something we also oh, do later God in the show. Bless. We we do stuff where we, we uh, do try it, to Nick. draw. It's fun. I <laughs> we, promise. We try to draw like cartoon characters from memory, like Garfield or something, which you think is going to be easy. And then you start putting lines down. You're like, oh my God, what's happening? It just becomes this <laughs> mutated blob of stuff. So it's just for fun. But like, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Drawing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So later that, on in the fun. show, we'll do some of that stuff. Yeah. We should so, draw right, Axe so, Wielder John. That would be fun. He's easy. Yeah, for he's easy to do. We, we, we did talk about doing that, maybe drawing your character tonight. So we, we mm-hmm. might do that as well. So remember, anybody watching, we might all be drawing Axe Wielder John. Later. Yeah, for memory. 
from memory. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> tough. I don't know. I've been looking at them a lot today. Maybe. Yeah, I'll I think that might be other so all right we're gonna move on to art review time it's art review time everybody. And we need to keep it to like 15 20 minutes if possible two hours so. got it per, per page yeah because per page. Per page. <laughs> then we have another one later and you know be nice not to have a four hour stream no, you're, you're right, Maybe you're three. right. thank you for Thank you for keeping us in line because I just I ramble so <laughs> it might take me a while. So our first artist is Jose. Uh, I'm going to attempt it. Pa Pares, pears. It's somewhere in there. I guess it was Pares. Pa Pare, okay. Me doing the the correct pronunciation of the R there is going to sound real goofy. But I probably got it pa wrong. Pares, <laughs> Pares, you know whatever. But you know who we're talking about, Jose. I think you mm -hmm. might be in chat. If you are, let us know. Um, so he's saying he's a professional illustrator, also working in the cartoon and comic book industry. Uh, I have a keen grasp on anatomy, realism, color, and a visually appealing style, as well as successfully telling a story with pictures. Uh, I can eagerly name Frank Frazetta, John Buscema, and Alfredo Alcala, nice, as big influences. Um, in previous experience, I've been uh, published in RPG game supplements by Mongoose Publishing, Living Imagination, Werver, and a few others. Uh, and worked in children's educational books with um, some different companies uh, and storyboards for commercials. Um, he self-published his own comic called Figgy, uh, which is a cool title. Um, some small press stuff, uh, various different, something called Castle Gray Skull Man, which I'm going to look into that too. Um, and uh, he's saying he does fully painted covers and pages, traditional and digital. Um, and pencil and ink worked as well. So he's got some portfolio pages here as well yeah, he's, as he's a, full, produ yeah. full production. Full production. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, and we've got, um, yeah, I've got a PDF of a book called Legend of Dark Rider, which looks looks pretty cool. I might, well, let me start off with his, uh, the samples that he sent in the email because there's this cool looking Sasquatch book that I'm curious about. Do Don't this? forget about okay. the thing I sent you this morning that he had sent. You remember? Right. Yeah. Um. I do. Do you remember more specifically what it said? I I I'll had lost it. it in our chat, but yeah. Um. He had some specific things he was he was looking into that he, he wanted some thoughts on. But uh, I I don't know if I can make. The, yeah. Here we go. I can make it bigger. So here's a Sasquatch book, which looks awesome. <laughs> I'm guessing this is a, a children's book, right? um so he did the cover art on that yeah we don't necessarily have to review this stuff but it's cool to look at because it looks like mm -hmm. a fun book i like his expression <laughs> very thoughtful looking bigfoot or sasquatch i like this little squirrel on the tree little raccoon uh i believe you say his first name's jose mm -hmm. yeah yeah, he did a, uh, so what we did with Axel or John is we had a pinup. People just started doing pinups on Instagram, and I went and oh, found yeah. them all and, and printed them in the back of the book. So he's printed an Axel there, too. Oh, yeah. nice. That's a funny coincidence. I don't think he yeah. realized we were even going to be talking with you tonight. So that's that's really yeah. cool. Um, do you happen to have that handy or anything? That'd be cool to show. Yeah, mm -hmm. so like the, so we had so many, we had like 100 pinups. So wow. wow. Yeah, I was yeah, going to do a, one too when I saw you were doing that. I was like, oh man, I got to draw the guy. <laughs> so there's a ton. It, so a lot of them have like six on a page or so. There's just a like there's just a bunch on like one page and they're all they're all random like uh qualities or whatever, but Jay Parez is I had to crop his, you know. So apologies that your painting got cropped, but it did make it on this page right here. There he is. Oh, cool! Hey, so he did a Lord thing. Yeah. He, it's a, it's nice. a way bigger paint. It's Good a job. way bigger painting. Uh, but we had oh, we had yeah. so many that we had to put multiples per page. So I think everyone's yeah. going to be upset at me because they're crop. But there's some good ones in here. Like here's Matt. I don't know if you guys seen Matt Lesniewski's work, but oh, it's super yeah, cool. Work, yeah. Cool. We got to have him on the show sometime because I, I just every single thing he posts, I'm just like, oh, it's so cool. Yeah, so, he's, what yeah. he's doing with shapes and lighting is so cool. Um. Here's a really great one by Matteo Ferrari. He does these oh, really nice. wonderful water. I hate people who can watercolor. I'm like, not fair. <laughs> yeah. 
I want to be a, able to do it. There's uh, Nick Darrington's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We changed the background color on that. And then uh, there's a couple other dudes, like Ed, Ed Lucy did a really cool one. He does, um, what's the name of his book? It's with the cats. It's the gay, the gay character with all the cats on it. Lovable Oaf. Yeah, Lovable Oaf. I love his stuff, so I got him to do. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I got him to do a cool axe sweater for me. So uh, I, Chris, bet that, Chris, I bet that was Chris Somney did one. Nice. So, awesome. Yeah, and I don't, I don't even know Chris, and he just posted it one day. I was like, man, this is awesome. So, yeah, the, we got like 60-something in there. The rest had to get bumped Dang. to the next book. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, man, the next one will have like 40-something. I bet that was cool to just get that just influx of. of <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. I gotta, I gotta, sh I gotta show you my copy, Brent. I gotta show you my copy of that. I got it. I got it signed and remarked, uh, and uh, uh, I got, I got me an X-rated. Uh, I got me an X-rated <laughs> remark. <laughs> yeah, he's got. All right, let me. Uh... Yeah, but that but that had to have been amazing. Just having that many. Darn it, I keep using the wrong browser. That many people submit, you know, your characters to be... Dude, wh while the campaign was going too, and it just kind of snowballed, it was such a huge promotional swell where everyone's like, what's this character? And all, you know, utilizing all those audiences was so cool. And uh, I can't thank all the, like, Jose, I can't thank you enough. And everyone who, who drew the character for me, it was super cool. And, you know, with an established character like Conan, it's been drawn in everyone's hand you know, hundreds of artists' hands and it lives in their imagination, but Axe Wilder is a new character and getting to see that before it even came out was like super rewarding. Like every day I would see a new one, you know, showing up on Instagram. So it was super cool. Oh man, that's cool. Well, congratulations just for making something cool enough that everybody wants to draw it. Because that's that's mm -hmm. kind of what you're saying is like when you make a new character that's cool, it it inspires people to want to draw something and make like a cool version of it because everyone's drawn you know spider-man and hulk and wolverine a billion times but you know you might be the first or the first hundred people to draw this character and and put a new spin on it and stuff so that's super cool so yeah good job jose on getting something into that book too mm -hmm. that was, what a funny coincidence so he's on the show tonight hey cool looking batman here and then yeah here let's go over to his uh Oh, and the first thing I was sharing, by the way, is his art station. So anybody who wants to go check out Jose's work, I love this this thing here too. Oh, I sent you in uh, Hangouts. Oh, the, right, right, okay. I guess it's not even called that anymore. Yeah, whatever it's called. Let me find that tab. Too many tabs open. One second. Okay, so, right. So Jose was saying he he feels, I don't know, is he okay with me? saying specifically what he what he was saying or or should i um, i'm sure well you can kind of get the gist of I'll, it i'll kind of yeah i'll kind of uh give a summary of it but it, it's uh basically saying he's he's feeling discouraged he's feeling like it's he's mm -hmm. maybe closer to giving up than he's ever been um because he feels like he won't be fully employed um you know in comics at least he, he's just feeling really down about it so he's like you were saying, he, he's been in the almost there stage for a long time. So um, I, I have heard that a lot from a lot of people. Comics, you know, the, the quote of like comics will break your heart from Jack Kirby. Um, it, it can be a really discouraging industry, especially at currently, you know, the just kind of where the industry is at the moment. Just a little bit. Like when we broke when we broke in, um, you know, in the I think all of us were in the early 2000s. Um, it was right after the crash from the 90s, you know, so we were going into a time where they were basically saying, like, you can't work in comics, you'll never make money in comics. Um, it's a dead end, you know, and we've been working now for 20 years in comics. So it's it it can happen even when, you know, maybe you're getting a lot of, um, you know, discouraging reviews on stuff or you're or you're not getting the jobs that you're hoping that you'll get. Um, it's really just who sticks with it you know and, and keeps going obviously you know you got your stuff published in in nick's book and we're reviewing your stuff now and and you you have done a good amount of work so it, it seems like um you know if you if you just keep going um find the right project maybe make your own project and and go that kind of like what nick was saying like being our own you know drive like we make our own books we promote it ourselves we publish it ourselves we we don't necessarily need the publishers to be the ones to give us something 
we can we can do it ourselves so maybe maybe that could mm -hmm. be your route you know but we we definitely get it a lot of people do feel that way um we've felt that way at times i'm sure you know maybe i should just get a real job that kind of thing when <laughs> when things get tough but um you know if, if you stay dedicated to it and it's what you're really passionate about i feel like you would you would find you'll you'll be able to find a way um just uh, i told them to go to conventions and get more like one-on-one -on -one time you know meeting yeah. people seeing faces stuff like that i see it i mean that's like where most people probably get hired so you know yeah. instead of just sending sending artwork you like meet them and show them your artwork they'll remember you more yeah because that is a big part of the industry too is it is kind of who you know you know finding the, a writer to work with or finding an editor or, or something to that effect um or just you know getting getting to know other artists and creators and and we kind of tr mm -hmm. we try to anyway build each other up and promote each other and, and stuff like that too so um i know i've personally um you know told a lot of people like pushed people on to jobs like if there's a job available um you know oh i know this artist or i know that artist or there's this guy who's been looking for work or whatever i've been doing that for a long time so um you never know when that kind of thing might take off too um but i mean you have awesome looking work here so <laughs> i think you you would be able to find find more stuff to do let me go to your uh well here's just yeah here's just an overview of a lot of his stuff here And then here is his uh, PDF of The Legend of Dark Rider, which is a cool title. And this is a cool looking uh, cover here, too. Let me I close this out. I guess not. So this is what he wants us to review here? Yeah, this is what this he sent to me. Okay. Is there like a first big page? I think it looks Let's like see. it's number four. Oh, is it? Well, like there's the cover, and then it looks like the next two pages. Okay, you're just saying page. Yeah. I thought you were saying yeah, issue four. No, but yeah. no, no. All right, me. so yeah, here's page, page, the first page of the story. Um, so uh, Jose, if you're around, let us know. You're you're doing it is full production. You're doing here, right? I believe so. Yeah. I think he does full production on everything. Yeah, I don't see credits on it, but I'm guessing because it does feel similar to his other stuff. So, um, all right. Well, let's get started with that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, I would say effective paneling, uh, good establishing shot. I really like this shot here of the hand on, uh, coming up over the ledge. That's That draws you in right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Good lighting on it. I can't zoom around on it very easily sorry what do you guys think here i like I, I i don't know i think i'm like with you that first panel and the second panel and then it's really good storytelling i think yeah it pulls you into it you do um, good job Nick, you might have something to say with this because uh, you. This kind of reminds me of like that oh, that fight scene, you know, with just tons of characters on rocky cliffs and stuff. Um, any advice for doing uh, that kind of thing or, or anything well, that you I, might have? I, I, well, I think what he did well there is get that character in the foreground. I think on mm -hmm. if you want to critique like panel three, um, I'll do a quick doodle. Like on panel three, he could have. Uh, nice. mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to be I love nice. Quick, be I love quick doodles for like for on panel doodle. three. I always want to draw it. So <laughs> on panel three, there's not like so. This is what Hickman always yelled at me about was like the foreground element. So like mm -hmm. on panel three, if he if he could have made if he could have made the character more, let's say this was the panel here. Uh, his hands down, but if he could have made the if he could have made the character just just create a foreground plane because right now you're missing that foreground element in panel where it gives yeah. panel one's great establishing shot panel two you got the hand coming into the foreground but panel three feels a little flat because yeah but if you if you were to turn that figure to like 
I'll do this quick so we're not wasting time. But if if, if you would have just put the figure like like in the really? foreground or and even if you didn't want to draw the whole figure, you, it would have been an easier shot too because you could have just got his back or something like yeah. this. Like uh or even mm -hmm. even you could crop it even like here just with the hand coming into the foreground and then you could have like here let me help you uh it would have been an easier shot to draw so you didn't have to draw the whole figure um and that's what i that's what like that that's some that's a trick that i always got to force myself i always got to force myself to put something in the foreground and with a hand mm -hmm. a hand extending out it could have been a little more dynamic right and that's something hickman yeah. yelled at me about for 10 years because i would always <laughs> draw like lego sets right they would always be these flat yeah. like yeah, cascaded yeah. things and he's like why don't you put something in the foreground like a big pipe or something and you don't have to draw that detail where the, the straight yeah. pipe is and it, it yeah. actually does look it, it actually does look better in print but like on the bottom panel what i think he did right there is the that foreground figure and coloring wise giving it a different tone was is nice so uh yeah. i think that's that's really cool it, it, the work is really quality work that he's doing um i was really interested because i'd only seen his painted stuff before i really wanted to see mm -hmm. his shot selection like down shots and the yeah. different camera angles because i think that's what really separates us as comic book artists uh i wasn't sure if he was just a painter but it looks mm -hmm. like he can do uh sequentials too which is cool so mm -hmm. i'm i'm interested yeah, to see like more he... of all this yeah yeah, full issue here. So, um, yeah, that, that's a great point. And I, I felt that, too, when I first saw that panel, just sort of flat across with the three characters. Um, so, yeah, great point. Um, and I, I might say, like, finding a way to pop, because, like, if you made this grayscale, um, the characters in panel three or, or just in general would almost be the same tone as the background. You're doing some really good things with your separations, like having the, the snow being you know, brighter than the background, things like that, or the mm -hmm. sky. Um, but definitely the, the characters do seem, seem to be almost the same tone as some of the, the background elements. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something to do actually is to, uh, you can go in, like if you're working in Photoshop or something, you can turn on a preview of grayscale so you can kind of see what your tones are looking at or go into like the black channel um, just to kind of get a, a feel for what those tones are. I actually started at one point, I was, I was painting just in grayscale and then colorizing it because I wanted to, enhance my uh my my tones and the level of contrast i was getting and and, and things like that and that kind of helped me to see things differently i had been trying to do it just with color before and i i did start to notice that some things would be a little too close in tone um so that's, that's when you color in gray when you color in gray ray do you uh set that layer to multiply then and then color under it like how do you keep your values yeah um how do i do that it's been a while since i've done it but I, I did some entire graphic novels where it was fully painted so it wasn't like um like i wasn't just coloring it was like uh i would start with a sketch and then just start painting from there um and i believe i would uh maybe make a layer i think i was making a layer on top set to color and then i would almost flat with paint um and then i would smash it together one of smash it together i would uh, flatten it and um and then start building on it from there adding highlights and things like that so it, it was uh it would start with a, a high contrast grayscale add a bit of color to it and then i would start working on highlights and then mix mix with the colors a little bit from there um it was kind of a new technique i, I was starting to try i think uh who was it maybe dave raposa um if you're familiar with his stuff he's excellent painter um he he kind of suggested that he's like maybe you should try just working in grayscale and see and see what kind of comes from there and then add the color in um which i that it does get a little tricky with trying to keep the tones once you start adding the color in um but it's a good place to start for keeping your value um separated you know um but yeah i mean a multiply could work but at some point you do kind of have to flatten it and start building on top of it to, to get the full contrast that you're wanting um just because with layer effects um you never quite get what you're you don't necessarily have to flatten it but that's i that would be my suggestion um just because layer effects can kind of uh, muddy up after a while um and some of them don't work well together so you know if you're able to flatten it and kind of work on top of it that that helps with that but yeah so the the figures and the background a little too similar i would say the 
that third panel, if you look at uh, the mountain range, it like lines up with his head and back. Like it. Oh, yeah. You kind of pull the mountain range down a little bit. I think right. he would pop because he just kind of yeah. melts into the background. That's a weird. Hand. Yeah. If you maybe just brought this down a little bit, you would pop his face out for, with the sky mm. or, or something to that effect. Yeah. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. He is kind of right lined up with that mountain range. Mm -hmm. But I mean, overall, this is a cool action packed page. I, I'm with yeah. you too on that, Nick, with, with that, this uh, fourth panel where you have that figure looking over his shoulder. That's a good touch because it makes you feel like you're in the middle of some action. Yeah. All right. Let's see page two. Whoa, whoa. This thing is scrolling real weird. Hold on. <laughs> I like this older character here with the gray hair. I wonder if that's based on anyone because it's it's definitely got a lively feel to it. Good expressions. I like his, you know, scared eyes here. I'm noticing like right off the bat the the varying of size. <laughs> you know? Like the yeah. the yeah, like there's a few that are kind of about the same size. And they're also kind of their heads are kind of placed in the middle of the panels, like all of them instead of yeah. moving them around a little bit. Mm. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's a good point. They are um, similarly sized. Um, yeah, yeah kind of like what Nick was saying too, with um, the like having maybe this character be a little farther forward or, you know, given a little bit more depth to, to the layering of characters. Mm. Um, and, and that way you can also get size differences, which is something we bring up quite a bit. Like, having uh, characters almost be the same size in multiple panels. Um, you know, Which you want to say that in like types of comics, but right. Yeah. yeah. Like in panel four, that would have been, or in panel two, you could have pulled him a little closer, but his back a little closer to us. But in panel four specifically, you could have had like a good, like, I love, I love close up shots that hit a good emotion. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it yeah. looks like a good face to me. And you could have cut, you could have cropped it like right below his wrist. And about right here on his arm, and you would have got a mm -hmm. nice close up, and the, the balloon still would have fit, you know. Yeah. And you it would have yeah, varied up. Mm, I yeah, agree. Yeah. It, yeah, it would have varied. It would have varied the shots a little more. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, like something that I I always loved when I was coming up and reading like Spawn and stuff is they would have just a close up of an eye or or something like that that like really you know gave you the impact of someone scared or you know, whatever, like just being that close. Greg Capullo mm -hmm. is an artist that really does that well. He'll get real close on people's faces or or on objects or hands or, you know, whatever. And it, it uh, gives you that kind of um, dynamism to to every page and every panel. Um, I also yeah, noticed like there's this... not really a focal panel either. Like, I don't know, that's just me. But like, when you look at a page, like, I like having a panel that your eye goes straight to, you know, and it yeah. just kind of like grabs you and then you read the rest. But this one. Yeah. Jim yeah, Lee talks about that, that anchor oh, image that's... on a, on a oh. panel. I agree with that. I agree mm -hmm. with that. Anchor panel. Yeah. I haven't heard that. Yeah. Anchor panel. Yeah. Like for me on this one, uh, the last panel does it, but it's mainly just because the sky is white. Um, so that really makes my eye go there. Um, so it's not necessarily, for the, what's happening in the panel or the the action of it or the size of the character it's just because there's white um but yeah like whatever you would call your most important aspect of the page like is it is it this guy scared or is it you know the bottom panel with him saying we can't do this or can't can't go this way i guess is what he's saying like which element is your most important storytelling part and then make that big, make it expressive, make it more important than the other ones. And then you kind of get a rhythm to what your storytelling is. Um, we've talked about that before too, like almost like music, you know, you need kind of a swell in music and, and then some, you know, calmer notes at times and then come back up and down. Like you kind of want to do that per page, give, give something that draws the eye and, and, you know, gives you a feeling of what the page is about. But overall, all the drawing is great. The the figures look really good. Um, I really do like this guy's face. And like you, you see how on the, this first panel, you have really good silhouettes here. 
um, your your characters are popping from the background. That's kind of what I mean from the other page where they kind of blend in with the the rocky texture of the background and stuff. Like, but mm -hmm. here they're really popping, so you you get a sense of the movement and action in that panel. But yeah, again, like maybe make that guy bigger and more in the foreground, the one that's running towards us, so that you get a sense of depth. I like I like the um, the painterly quality of it, the texture that you've got going in the you know kind of the splatter effects here in the in the white of the sky and, and things like that the graininess that all looks really good brent you got any thoughts here uh, i think you're pointing out most of the stuff that that guy running in the first paddle i would probably make his hair going the other way because it almost looks like he's getting knocked back when i first looked at it yeah that's a good point yeah it would be Good it spot. should be probably flowing behind him or something, yeah. Because I was trying to figure out what. I don't know. It's a small complaint, but <laughs> no, it oh, makes sense. The though. details you, you do matter. Gotta, yeah, and that's something that can be really tricky, like having people's clothing flow the right way or their hair or things like that. You know, because um, you you have to think about a really specific moment of time with that action shot, um, and sometimes you might be taking a step and the hair flows that way, but to really get a, across what direction they're moving, you might want it to be flowing behind them. Even if, you know, what you're thinking about in that moment is, you know, the step that he's taking him hitting the ground. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's a really good point. Okay. Cool looking page here. Cool. But yeah, again, like that first panel, that feels like it's probably the most important thing. So I would, I would want to make that big and, and in your face have the blade coming towards you. And maybe you. a little bit more towards the side so you can see the movement of the, you know, the stabby, stabbiness. Yeah. <laughs> the stabbiness, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love all the effort he's putting into these pages, like mm -hmm. pencil inking and coloring them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that shows a lot. I think if I looked at this as a whole, I would definitely say the only the major concern is like the layouts, right? And I think he could work easier and have a little less work, but have more impact from his pages altogether. Like if yeah. you, like like Renee was saying, if you turn that to a profile shot and have him arched back and that spike coming out of him in a negative space, you could almost do that on white and it would look great with the blood splatter. Move the other yeah. panel down, move panel three to the right, and um, like so, make make the like the girl looks great. By the way, like I love the color palette there. Uh, but if you move panel two down and make make that like a horizontal, maybe a third of a page, and have him like that, that could add a little a little more impact. Um, but and it's not it's probably less work than the shot that he picked in the smaller for smaller real estate, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, but he's putting effort and care into everything. So I think really the layouts will be key. And even in panel three, like that guy that's on the spike, like I almost want to grab his stuff in Photoshop and just grab what he already has and just kind of pull it forward a little bit, you know, like, like if I could pull that guy forward, who's got the guy on the spike there and, you know, crop it maybe right below his pel pelvis area a little bit and push him forward. And then you can keep the same background. You could get a little more, dynamicism or something in there um yeah i think yeah that's that's a good point i was trying to find a good reference of i know i've seen um like wolverine stabbing somebody or someone being stabbed uh, you know like in that same kind of profile shot where it's almost a silhouette and, and you really get that impact of it um i'm not finding the right image but <laughs> i'll show mm -hmm. you probably know what i'm talking about though but there's one um, of electra getting stabbed is that the one I'm thinking of? Probably. And it's like it's like Sorry. pushing the cloth up. I think. Yeah, was... that's that sounds like what I'm thinking of. Yeah, like yeah, like something like this, like where you really feel that mm -hmm. stabbing, that impact. Yeah. I can't make that bigger Spoiler. for some reason, but <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Electra got stabbed a long time ago. Um, I was gonna say I really like the um, the uh, foreshortening on on this female character here in this panel, mm -hmm. honey. I feel like you would appreciate that because that's something that you've you've always tried to do is is 
some more extreme foreshortening, really getting a feel for the segments of the body, you know, going back in space. Mm -hmm. I've, I've learned a lot from her with, with foreshortening. Um, especially with female characters, because they're harder for for some reason. The foreshortened for me than they're male not. Characters they're are, so but. much easier than men. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I bet everyone here is probably thinking the opposite of what you just said. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Nick? Are yeah, they about no, this? I mean, no to you, yeah. There's no women in Axfield or John for a reason. <laughs> I'm not drawing. <laughs> I don't want to draw women. They're. Uh, <laughs> I have to use a lot of lines to. I have to use a lot of lines to trick people into thinking I'm a good artist. So, a lot you of lines on women. A, a lot of too. a lot of lines on women never works out. So, um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not one. I'm not one to reference the or talk about drawing women. I, I want to see you make a character easy. like a female character with tons of muscles. Yeah, can you do that <laughs> yeah. for me. Cool. I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> Make your own Wonder Woman. There's not enough. Beef. No, super must like barbarian. They, I don't know. Barbarian woman. <laughs> There's not enough barbarian women out there that are real barbarian. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what, what Nick was saying about like the level of work that's going in with stuff, it, it is really, really impressive. You know, I've, I've done a lot of full production books. Renee's been doing full production books. Like it's it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of thought process. It's 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 impressive that you're getting this level of detail and quality and like style. Like you do have a, a style that stands out, by the way. Like just the the painted style and, and rendering and the color choices that you're doing. Um, it does look unique. So I think you're doing a good job with that. Um, one one thing that uh, I think it was I think it was Nick that was mentioning, but like yeah, mixing up your paneling a little bit, like. Like maybe trying to have a shot where it's um you know full bleed like the whole like a, a splash page image but then you have inset panels on it things like that mm -hmm. um you know like like even this this panel here with the characters like a, a down shot of them I almost wonder what this would feel like if that was you know um, filling out the whole page and all the other panels would be inset on top of it um, and and it would kind of give it this feel of like what's coming or, or something to that effect, like a, a, a bigger area, um, you know, just play around with, with doing that kind of thing, breaking panels, you know, maybe see what, see what comes out of it from, from trying some different things, having characters overlapping or having, you know, a full character on a page that's overlapping panels, like things like that. Maybe try experimenting with some things like that. I think he's, I think uh, an issue is he's trying to fit a lot of, I think you should think about movies a little bit. Like, uh, I'm 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 much more of a uh, like think about the like you could crop like on on panel three, you could you could go in and crop this guy from the top to bottom and just have a little bit of a hand here and then show yeah. some of the overlapping with the same amount of space, but and you've already done all that work, but now you and then we would get the point if that was just a hand with blood on it dripping. And the spike, you know, here, but you can, you're allowed to crop, like, think about what you, you can crop and really frame your pages with is what I would tell them. Mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. the work, the work is all there. Right. But that then you'd have a lot more impact if that guy was a little closer to the camera. And I think because he wants to show he can draw well, that he's not moving the shapes beyond the frame sometimes. You know, yeah. uh, I know he is. I know he is here and there, but it feels a little safe, a little bit. You know, where he could, yeah, where little, he has, yeah. yeah. I, I love having you do the sketches because it, it really illustrates the point. <laughs> that's something I can't do because I'm usually, you know, doing windows and stuff. But I always yeah, want to really like helpful. just show show what I'm trying to say. That's really helpful. So thank you for the, doing the, that. The terrible mm -hmm. sketches, the terrible sketches. I know. No, it looked great. He's gonna be like, like what? Layout. Look at this. He's gonna be like, look at this no. trash. Oh whatever. No, no, I bet he's about. really thankful for what you just did because that that like like uh, when I was doing the correspondence courses for the Kubert School, seeing like I would get it back with um, tracing paper over it, and like Joe Kubert or Andy or Adam, one of those would draw over it and say like try this, and it just made me go like whoa okay. Like if someone tried to explain that to me, I probably would have been like oh okay yeah I'll try to 
figure out what that means but just seeing it it's like oh okay now i get it like now i i see that depth that i could have gone with in this panel or or whatever like that's that was a great example so stop being so hard on yourself Nick. <laughs> yeah no kidding you're awesome you really stand out sure. mm -hmm. i'm figuring it out I feel like he does a better job of it here on this page for sure on yeah. two and three yeah but again like the um the the figures are all sort of the same tone i wish i could kind of do that right now if i could just turn a grayscale i'd be able to show you like um they all feel like the same level because they're all the same tone sort of um having them fade out as they go back in space having this like this main character if you can see what i'm yeah, you can see um, having that guy pop more than the other ones because he's he seems like the, the most important character in that panel. And the other ones are sort of the, the soldiers, you know, um, so have him pop a little bit more, have the other ones fade out as they get further in the distance. That's something that Renee has always wanted me to do, too, is like the layering of elements within a panel, like while I'm coloring or whatever, like, you know, make depth. sure to each each one each layer needs to be a little bit lighter a little bit less saturated you know going back because it, it really does make things pop well um and yeah it would be cool to see that a bit more but again like i don't know what your um deadline was like on this either you know <laughs> when you're when you're working on a on a rush deadline or, or anything like that or, or just a normal deadline really like it's this is a lot of work to produce um so i could see that wanting to go with something quick to to make it um you know make it just work as it is uh but maybe try some mm -hmm. of those things because we see it like in in some other areas too like in the um like i was saying with with like this panel like this character really pops this guy um and it's because of the contrast between the foreground and background whereas whoa that's a cool shot I'm getting ahead of myself here um whereas like uh like this stuff like this guy kind of blends in with the other other characters or like even here, like this this layer of um, snow, you know, like on this cliff, is pretty similar. Excuse me to the the background snow color, sort of like a 20, 30 percent gray. Um, both would be kind of close to the same. So just brighten up the background a little bit more or something to make that pop a bit. I, I like this creepy looking dude here. <laughs> we'll zoom in on him. And I, I've seen you do something interesting here too. This guy has a bit more highlight, like on the nose and lip and things that I, I haven't seen in some of your other panels. And I, I don't I assume that's a conscious decision. It, and it, it really does make the, him look kind of creepier and stuff here. So I was um, gonna bring that up. I'm no colorist, but I do like the highlights. Kind of has more of a Glenn Fabry kind of feel to that face yeah. than the other ones. But like if you were to do the two things like even with that guy with the axe uh, on the top panel there that's on the screen, mm -hmm. if he was to push yeah. him forward a little bit, but also give him, I love using like a, not value speaking, but real estate speaking, like a 3%, 2% edge highlight. Does that make sense to you? And then it would like yeah. push him forward and change the value of him. Like he did yeah. in that first panel on the first page that he did with the, in the battle scene. If he did yeah. that, then that this would all have a little more depth to it yeah for sure yeah yeah I, I did notice a lack of highlights and stuff oh real quick i wanted to say bye to if man he's got to go yeah. he's saying he, bye uh, if man. he really likes jose's stuff and he'll be checking out nick's books real mm -hmm. soon it's like good night for coming good night if man As thank always. you for coming every week really appreciate it mm -hmm. you're the best on that uh second panel if you zoom out yeah on um let me zoom out again See how there's like a kind of a blank space on the right side of the second. Oh, yeah. I would almost extend yeah, that like spear the, over yeah. into that space. So the, the spear is highlighted. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like having the, having that. Just to fill. Because my eye keeps just going to that empty space. Mm -hmm. But I guess there was an old dead guy laying back there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like yeah, that, no, I see what you mean. Like it does it does feel like kind of an empty spot so it um and and also with the um 
the the snow here and the mountain in the background it almost felt like it was on the same plane so i i actually kind of didn't notice the guy yet but um yeah yeah i see what uh, you're i I yeah, agree yeah. with that. If he if he would have taken that spear, just turned it a little slight slight edge this way, mm -hmm. and you could have yeah, put that spearhead, right. yeah, right there. Put that spearhead right in that space, and it would have balanced mm -hmm. it out, and would have created a little more depth. Yeah, and it would help to draw your eye over there to to notice that guy in the background yeah. too. So you're kind of back. Yeah, good point. But again, overall, this all this stuff's looking really cool. I'm excited to see this page. Look at that. That's a cool action shot. Love that head wound. <laughs> great movement, great, uh, great, you know, flow of the cape. I, I like the I know, uh, awesome. sort of the yellow action lines there, you know, with the in that painted style. That looks really neat. Kind of a graphic mm -hmm. element mixed in with the realistic painting. That's that's kind of cool. Is that an axe? But he has like a cool shaped axe. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort so, of a spade shaped yeah. axe. Probably. What do you think of the axe action, Nick? Yeah, we got You're an the axe expert. I, lo I like it. <laughs> an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think that I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good on this panel. So like on this pan on this page, it's a cool action scene. But I think you could push those foreground. So like you know this from those Kubert school. Uh, mm -hmm. correspondence courses. I took those too, Ray. And um, oh, yeah. like he, he could definitely get a little more, a little more depth, like a little more depth in these, in these guys. And with, yeah. you know, he's got this guy here getting busted and twisted. I'm going to do, I'm going to keep doing my, uh, my crappy layouts. Yeah, man, go for it. No, those are, those awesome are great. Layout. And they're super helpful. Yeah. And I noticed um, having like, this guy looks great. The guy with the big white eyes, you know, um, mm -hmm. but he is sort of on top of the other character, you know, like if you think in silhouettes again, like you would want to move him off, you might even just make him like move him, have him be the character on the left there. And, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing you're going with bigger, you know, have him closer to the camera or something like that to create more depth. Um, yeah, just to, just to move him off of there. And cause like, you see how good the silhouette is with like the top part of this panel, this character and that character awesome yeah but then, yeah down here this guy gets lost in this guy's legs a little bit i mean we see mm -hmm. him like it's not like you can't tell what's going on but it, it it would be a more effective layout if he was you know off mm -hmm. of the other character a bit where'd you go brent what you doing brent i don't let my dog <laughs> off Oh, which one? Go up to that top. I, I got to use this figure as reference. Let me see that top figure. Sure. Yeah, let me zoom. The one out. that's in the air. So he's swinging up. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, he's so he's crack. he's like jumped in the jumped in the air and swung up. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if I could get his accent with the way I would do it, but. Oh, I see. We have uh, Jose is actually in a different chat that's not showing up where I'm at here, oh. and I can't put it up on screen. He's <laughs> Hi, on Jose. Facebook chat, so um, he's he said a bunch of stuff that I've been missing. So um, he was saying it was a young adult book. I'm I'm guessing he's talking about the Sasquatch book. Mm -hmm. uh, he was saying to Nick, "It's okay if it's cropped." His his uh, axe wielder John Pinup. Um, I see a smiley face and a. I guess I could. I don't know how to share that. I guess, but. Um, so he's saying he worked on pencils on this and it was digitally colored by David Persley over tight pencils. Okay. So that does change, you know, what we're, we're talking about. Wish I saw that sooner, but either way, the, the book together, you guys uh, did a really good job of meshing your styles together. And he's saying he's swinging the ax up. So he was answering us there. Okay. Jose, thank you for being here. Sorry. I didn't see that sooner. I'll try to keep mm -hmm. this one open as well. Too many windows. So what do you think one more page like after after nick's done of course or is this sure. should this or be the final the this might be the book. final <laughs> one i think this is a good ending yeah, spot it's like an awesome point. page yep. Yep. good point honey thank you for mm -hmm. keeping us on track here because <laughs> I, I would just keep looking at art all night 
It was just going, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, look at this one now. Wow. <laughs> Got the whole box. Speaking mm-hmm. of which, ooh, there's a cool scene. Got some archers. <laughs> All right, let me get back up to that. Too far. Boy, this thing is scrolling real weird. Mm-hmm. Were you viewing that as him coming in with the axe about to hit him? Yeah, I think originally. Yeah, I don't think true. I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna have a solution for that per se. Like, uh, I'm gonna try to keep his pose, but uh, I, I just think the major thing that Jose's got to work on is the layering of is the layering of his shots. Like that. that that's what. That's what I think he needs to work on more than anything. And so, like. This is terrible too, by the way. But like, if he took that that guy in the foreground and he put his head like all the way in the foreground, right? And then he could yeah. twist that guy in the midground. This guy could be falling back to us. And then I got yeah. him jumping. But 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 really, just take that, take all of your drawing ability, and paint a beautiful half of a beautiful face, and you'll create a ton of depth. And you can hide some of that figure and give yourself a lot yeah. less work. You know. Um, that's what I that's what I would do. Like just if he does that on every one of his panels, on every one yeah. of his panels that he's done, if he's thought about moving that foreground figure like there, you can move it way up, you know? And then yeah. but some of so you can move some of these four hundred percent up to thirty to percent up. He's gonna create more depth. Uh I, I like the silhouette of that guy coming in, but it definitely feels like he hasn't cracked him yet. Uh yeah, like how did yeah, he think- how did he jump and swing up? So I would have had him like grounded and not jumping and like, you know, going something like this in silhouette against the, the sky to show that and then this guy then this guy would be turned or turned this way back to you and looking at the reader. So I, I probably yeah. would have had that guy grounded instead of jumping. Oh yeah. That would help you know too. What I mean? Yeah, if he was if he was kind of up like that, that would give you that Yeah, motion. yeah. And then, he's kind of doing that, this. Yeah. Yeah, because he's like he's jumped. So right now he like kind of jumped forward and swung up, which is a little awkward of a movement. But right. um, but it's still drawn pretty well, and then yeah. uh, I think colored pretty well. But so all that work is in there. But I think I think he can do less work for more impact. Is probably my mm-hmm. is the critique I would give Jose. You know, overall. Yeah. Yeah, so no, the, that's, the, that's going, advice, yeah. Work at working on the layouts, and the layouts are they're easier because they're it's not a drawing ability problem, it's mm. a staging problem. And uh, yeah, a good book to look at is Frame Dink. I don't know if you guys have ever looked at Frame Dink oh, or not. I forgot all about that book. I had it a long time ago. Yeah, that was a yeah, good book. and yeah. So Frame Dink, and that's by a cinematographer, and he talks about some of the staging there. And so I would tell Jose to get a book like that look at some cine- cinematography books and really how they establish that foreground, midground, background. And uh, yeah, there you go. And it's, yeah. it's a really popular book. Yeah, man. I totally forgot about that. That was a really good book. I think it was at the mm-hmm. library. I, I, when I was a kid, like I, I would check that out. I started getting into cinematography type books and stuff, trying to understand shots and, and things like that. And that was a great one. Good reference. Everybody go get that book. I think you and I think a lot alike, Nick. <laughs> like when it comes yeah. to layouts and stuff. Make it easier. Make it easier on yourself, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, Jose, that was really fun to look at. That's that's cool work. I really do like your, your penciling. I guess I stopped sharing it here, but um oops, I'm in the wrong wrong browser again. Dang it. Let's I'm going to go tell my wife good night, guys, but I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Sure. Sure. All righty. Okay. So I'm gonna mute um, do we have any final life. thoughts here? I think it's pretty good. well covered. I think he has some pretty yeah. good direction to focus on if he wants to. Yeah. Like on the staging, like Nick said. Do you maybe oh, share? Oh, yeah. Like what he was. I was just going to say what he was saying about the the layouts and stuff like you you can even just use objects you know shapes um some people even do uh just you know a, you know black big fat marker or something to to get their elements in place 
and then they'll you know work on what they are but it, it's more like the the shapes and the feel and the and the overall design things like that what were you gonna say honey um sharing his his yeah uh, just like a final stuff. share of his so people know where sure. to find his stuff so he mentioned uh, he did this castle gray skull man dot com. Uh, he did some of this book. I've, I've seen um, this before. Have you? Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Neat. Oh, they got whole PDFs of it on on here. Let's go through another book. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. But everybody should go check this out because it looks like mm. a neat. <laughs> it looks like a neat project. And Brent's heard of it, so it must be cool. And you can find him on ArtStation. He's got a ton of cool looking stuff on here. And I'm, I'm assuming this is probably all full production stuff. But yeah, a lot of fun stuff on here. If anybody needs somebody to draw monsters and battle scenes and stuff, I think you got your guy here. Mm -hmm. Jose pa Pades. Yeti. <laughs> Which sounds stupid when I say Fast it. Sasquatches. But... Sasquatches. If you need some Sasquatches Sasquatch drawn, you need Jose. <laughs> and while You're I'm awesome, it, Jose. Thanks for sharing your stuff. Yeah, we really appreciate don't it. Don't give and, up. And really, like, yeah, don't give up. Keep at it, because you're obviously very talented. Here's a, mm -hmm. Here he is on Facebook, too. Everybody go friend him on there. Um, he, obviously very talented, passionate, you know, um, and you, you want to... <laughs> Let me not share our private chat there. <laughs> um, you you want to uh, you want to do this for a living, so um, you just got to keep at it until you find the right project or whatever mm -hmm. to to really, you know, push it to that next level. But you've you've got what it takes, obviously, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep going for it. Thank you very much for showing your stuff. Really appreciate that. Bravo, bravo Yay for Jose. <laughs> so while we wait for uh, uh nick to get back Ooh. here's time here's a weird game. thing i saw no nope. <laughs> gotta prepare for the game no time for me to show you some weird stuff or some cool stuff <laughs> <laughs> we do need to prepare for our games too dang it i'm sharing yeah. it on the wrong because it's thing again 12 30 and Is if it? we're gonna yes so we still have a review and stuff no it's only 11. yeah but look at this though <laughs> yeah, but look at this. Look at this cool cosplay I saw. Jack Kirby and some inspired oh, cool. cosplay. I've seen that. Isn't that that's awesome? That's awesome. I just saw that. And I was like, that's so creative. Like, you don't see that kind of stuff. So, whoever that is, well mm -hmm. done with that. I want to see a lot more of that kind of stuff. Just 2D style. I don't know if it's paper or what, but it just works so well. It looks like a living Jack Kirby character. Mm hmm. What else do I got? What else do I got? I have all kinds of stuff. No, you're you're saying you want to get ready for drawing challenge time? Yeah, just by the so when Nick comes back, we could just be ready. Do you want to do like what's that? I said, what character are we drawing? Do oh, you want to start with that, or do you want to do? Yeah, maybe we could start with that. I think we should draw axe wielder John with our opposite hands. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I want to draw him cool. That though. would be fun. Uh, we could just draw I know, him. but you know, <laughs> he'd probably rather see us just draw. Him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think drawing it as cool as possible would be more fun. Maybe. How about we? Put well, I do want to do a left-handed. It'll thing. take longer. But let's uh, put the pencils in our mouths. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. John style it like a big star. Just shove it, shove it in her ear, and try to draw something. Mm -hmm. Just stab the pencil oh, into yeah. our face. Jose was saying thank, uh, saying thank you to everybody. By the way, you're welcome, welcome, Jose. I'll see Keep you around awesome on art. Facebook. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna make some Meanwhile, tea. I will be back. Gonna go make some tea. Mm -hmm. While she's making tea and Nick saying goodnight to his wife, look at this weird octopus. I just like showing weird stuff. This is an octopus that stretches itself out and blows itself up into a balloon. Because octopuses are aliens. Mm -hmm. 
at a depth of 1600 meters, 5,250 feet. Is that if like... anybody's played Subnautica, by the way, that's all I can think about when I see stuff like this. This alien wow. creatures in deep depths of look at this thing. It's kind of like the God. the alien from uh, what was that Jordan Peele? I can't think of what it's called. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't think of what it's called. Oh, no. No. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Couldn't think of that name. Look at that. But yeah. That's, I know. It's insane. And it's got these weird flippers on its head. Is that like a weird... defense mechanism or what's a. Um, that's a good question. It doesn't really. I like how the, the caption is you're going to tell me that's not an alien. <laughs> like, yeah, that's are. the most alien. Yeah, it basically is. And I was seeing another thing just the other day about how. Um, how intelligent they are like we're, mm -hmm. we're discovering that they're way more intelligent than we thought they, they were like almost to you know not to human level but you know closer than we thought they were probably in a different way like their intelligence yeah. surpasses us look what it's doing yeah no kidding like do you like, know how to do that i'm a flaw into rocks and stuff <laughs> yeah it's crazy this is look at this all night i'm fascinated by this thing <laughs> They can like they can open jar, like complicated locks and jars and stuff. Yeah. Oh, that was something I heard too. Is um this uh this one octopus that keeps finding ways to escape from its it's like in a aquarium or whatever, and it keeps mm -hmm. finding ways to escape, and it goes into another tank to catch. Fish. I forget exactly what it was doing. Yeah, was it just catching fish? Or I something think they like noticed that? About they notice fish missing, and then they videotapes it. He's like crawling out of tanks, going into other tanks, and like. <laughs> And they then go smart enough it. to go back, yeah. And then go uh, back like, to the tank, so they want to know. <laughs> like it knows not to get caught. That's mm -hmm. that's crazy. Oh man. Oh, here's another weird thing. <laughs> I say most of this just to show you anyway. A mm -hmm. lot of these things, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna send that to Brent, and then I'm like, nah, I'll send that, I'll save that for the stream. <laughs> yeah. So look at this nightmare. This is a rat oh, yawning. Seen... Have you seen this too? <laughs> I've seen I've seen similar videos, but not this one. Yeah. It's <laughs> horrifying. Hey, next back. The brain turns what we're in, looking at it. into his eyeballs. <laughs> what yeah, happens it's like that? We're just evolving <laughs> into the craziest stuff we can find. Here's a rat yawning, and it looks like it has two different faces and stuff. It's absolutely bizarre. I was also sharing uh where is that at? We'll close that one. He kind of looks like you're a villain with the skull face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think you missed this. This was me sharing uh you might have seen this right before you left. I'm, I'm not sure, but oh I'm doing the wrong window again. Dang at it. How did Jose take today. the end of the critique? Was he good? Yeah, he was saying thank you very much to, to everybody. He, he appreciated it. Yeah, I was showing this, this uh, Kirby-inspired cosplay, if it's popped up. Oh, yet. I love that. I love those lines. Isn't have you guys cool? seen the – have you seen the Mike Mignola, the new Hellboy video game? No. Is there oh, really oh really God, it's, it. it's so good. It's like the shader – yeah, it's all in his style. The shaders is called Worm, W-Y-R-M weird worm or something like that but it might be worth playing the trailer they just dropped a new one but it's just okay. in his style and that that spot black on there looks great it's a uh, hellboy something worm i think hellboy um, web of worm oh i'm seeing it okay. yeah hellboy dude, web of pl worm. play okay. play that trailer dude that the Ooh, shader okay. they got on that is in his style it looks great dude. oh man i had no i had never heard a thing about this this is cool yeah, it's coming out in November, I think. I don't play games, but oh, this man. might be one to pick on. up. Look at that already. What are we dealing with here? Four psychic spikes measured at over 180 BPUs. Italy, Russia, Scotland, and the U.S. Your job is to find rockets and nice. investigate possible links between this location and the spikes before they cause any further uh, repercussions. <laughs> That's a fun word. Here goes nothing. Web of weird. I'm gonna be so. Oh, it is web of weird. Definitely not Kansas. Oh, 
cool. Well, they try to replicate that Nicola style, and I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Good night. The further you travel the world, the closer you will come to that which corrupts us all. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Oh, October. That's coming up pretty quick. October. Cool. Halloween. I was expecting like two years from now or Excited. something crazy, but. Man, that was cool. Was that Ron Perlman doing the voice? Mm -hmm. hmm. No, the guy the guy who passed away uh, recently who did the voice. Um, uh, uh, he's the the guy from The Wire, the real put together black guy from The Wire. He does the voice oh, now, man. and he re he recently passed away. And I, I hopefully he finished. I mean, so, sorry he passed, but I know it was like a thing for a minute because he was voicing Hellboy in the in the in the game Bad. cool man thanks for showing me that that was neat i'm surprised i hadn't heard anything about that yet oh that's that was awesome. great oh yeah here's the other weird thing i was sharing while while you were gone <laughs> i'll keep going back to it have you ever seen this octopus do this <laughs> it's a it's an octopus that blows itself up into a balloon Pretty badass. Yeah. <laughs> chat, let me know if you want me to keep playing this a few more times or <laughs> here we got Rob Norton in the chat. Hey Rob. Hi Welcome. Rob. Welcome. Another 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 person from Digital Webbing, by the way, Nick. Mm -hmm. He's doing a He-Man comic, his own fan comic mm -hmm. he's been working on for a long time. Really cool. That's awesome. So yeah, there's that. All right. Well, yeah. Welcome, Rob. Thanks for coming. So you guys want to get into the drawing, drawing challenges? Is it drawing challenge time? At least a little here's, bit. Here, here's our stats from last time. Oh, yeah. We drew an opposite hand horse, which was <laughs> just hor horrible to draw. <laughs> and I think Brent won again. Brent won, wins every time, and it's really yeah. annoying me. <laughs> We've done three rounds, and Brent won two of them. Is it time? Yeah. Like, how much time do we get? Just a little bit of time? Yeah, it's kind of whatever, but it's all kind of done around. Is it freehand? Do I get to use my blue pencil first, or do or no? Yeah, whatever you want. Just like, use... Yeah, whatever you, you're comfortable with. We just usually do pencil drawings, but it's, mm -hmm. it's nothing, like, finished. or Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> show, show him examples, right? Sure, sure yeah. yours aren't. Show oh, yeah, your Donald Duck. Duck. Duck real quick. Oh, my God, okay. Let me find it. Oh God, there's something. Oh God. <laughs> I can tell just by the weird lines here. Something weird I drew. Oh, this was me trying to draw the pink panther from memory. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. That was left-handed. That's pretty good. No, 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 no this one, one wasn't left-handed. That we was do. just uh, yeah. memory. It's no. I got no more of that. Just from memory. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, so Nick, I want you to picture Betty Boop in your head. Okay, what is Betty? Okay, is Betty yeah, Boop yeah. Like? That's my mom's favorite character, so she's got stuffed animals of her all over the house. So yeah. Well, I, I know. Don't show, you your, don't you show your mom it, what I did. <laughs> uh, what the heck? <laughs> oh, those are good, man. Those look great. Sure. Yeah, Stewie with some woman legs. In case it we'll wasn't clear, it. like we're supposed to just draw characters without looking at any reference. Like we just have to kind of remember. <laughs> and and it's like the it heart. Yeah. It's Donald Duck, everybody. Look at Donald <laughs> Duck from memory with his frog legs. <laughs> do you want to do that like first? This one. I, I started with the eyes and beak and I'm like, hey, I'm doing pretty good. And then the lines just started falling apart from there. There's Sweetie Bird. <laughs> I like good. I like it. Top top as well. yep. Do you want to do that one first? Do you like pick I'm a good. character? I'm, I'm good with whatever, yeah. Can I use my right hand or left hand? That's the main. 
That's the main question. Well, since, when we draw so... like characters from memory, we just use our normal hands. And All then right. we have yeah. like a second game where it's like you draw something with your opposite. Because it's it's hard enough, but so since I'm so good, I'm gonna give you guys a little. I'm gonna handicap myself a little bit. I'll be right back. You guys go ahead and start. I, I don't even need time. I'll, I'll get. Who are we drawing? I don't know. <laughs> Rob, give us ideas. There was oh, let's see, we had some leftover from last time, right? Like uh, there was Rosie from Jetsons. Um, That's a hard one. I want. What about like Fred Flintstone or? Something like Earth that. Earth could be cool. That could be cool. Mm -hmm. That's to him. That would be kind of hard. <laughs> but you have to kind of draw, you have to try to draw it like he actually looks in the cartoon, yeah. like instead of your style. Yeah, try to draw mm -hmm. so as close as possible to the cartoon. Are we going to start without Ray? I guess. That's what he said. <laughs> okay. I'll just drop in. Oh, no. Fred Flynn. I think though. I got this one. <laughs> I know he has like no neck. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What the heck does his nose look like? It's kind of hard because I'm kind of mixing him and Barney Rubble. Yeah. Barney and him <laughs> together. Who's your favorite, <laughs> Barney or Fred? I like. Yeah, I don't know. Barney. I like Barney. <laughs> I'm a Barney guy. <laughs> You're a Barney guy. <laughs> Is, I, I find their eyes kind of the hardest thing to figure out. <laughs> of yeah, all these. That? They had smaller oh. eyes, I think. Did he? Right? <laughs> Weird. The no neck is a good. No neck. I want to say the back of his head's flat, right? I don't know. Or does he yeah. have that? Yeah. That's what I'm picturing too. No, no. Can't any of these be easy? Just a little bit. Like, does he have eyebrows even? <laughs> they gotta be the ones like floating off their head, right? That's the okay. only thing I can assume. Are you guys done yet or what? Are you yeah, Garfield? Garfield? That's a good Garfield. Uh-huh. Sure Compared to mine that looked like Sonic the Hedgehog. Way better. <laughs> Still a great, just you know, wrong wrong <laughs> universe or whatever. So I think Fred Flintstone is a great choice. I have a story, of course. Uh when I was um probably in second grade, I think I stayed up really, really late one night drawing Fred Flintstone or it wasn't, it wasn't actually Fred Flintstone, but it was a caveman um, for like, it was a giant poster thing. Uh, and I, it was sort of, it ended up kind of looking like Fred Flintstone, but uh, I took it to school the next day and the teacher was mad at me and said that my sister drew it and then it wasn't me. So I was <laughs> devastated. <laughs> All right, got was some it, drawing stuff. Huh? Did you end up convincing her? No. Nope. She just thought my sister, who was an accomplished artist, must have been the one to do it. So, nope. <laughs> this Never worked so out. Why is it so hard? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is every time. Why is this so hard? I don't know. Oh, by the way, I guess we could say this at this point because it's been a bunch of years, but we we did a cover for a, a Flintstones. Oh yeah, book where is that for DC? Uh, they I don't know if it was ever used or not. They kind of never. No. that was right before that. DC took the direction in a di like with the Flintstones. If you remember what they actually did do with it, like it was more like edgy and. Stuff oh like, yeah, like, and we did it yeah. more kind of fun and mm -hmm. stuff. I wonder it would it be wrong to pull that up? I don't even know if I have it anywhere. I'm sure it's fine. So long yeah. ago. Maybe I'll take a second to since I don't need the time to draw because mine's gonna come out perfect. I'll uh I'll take a peek. This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> it should be easy. 
How are you doing, oh, Nick? Oh, here it is. Actually. I think Nick is killing it, probably. <laughs> mine, mine, I looks, <laughs> mine looks like Homer Simpson, I think. In a movie. Oh, yeah, I can't. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm interrupting. I just realized I can't show this yet because then I would be looking at Fred Flintstone. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to oh, avoid yeah. it. Okay. But then after, when we're done, we should show, show our cover. Do you know where it's at? I do. I found it. Yeah. I found the oh, folder cool. anyway. And then I went, oh, yeah. Why did none of my pencils work? What do you do to what do you do to things, honey? I don't know. Why are you doing Get this? Into okay. Things. Now that you guys are about done, I'm gonna start. And win win instantly. Hope you guys are ready. Oh yeah, so we had uh Rob Norton saying um Fred Flintstone, the Cro Magnon version of Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to be our judge, Rob? Oh, yeah. Can anyone else yeah, in chat? Yeah, anybody watching, if you want to help us judge uh, who wins this art contest we're doing here, um, or give us ideas on what you want to see us draw, go ahead and do it. Okay, and we're doing Fred. Let me put the, let me put the thing up here. Try to drop Barney alongside him. Oh. <laughs> it's, uh, it'll turn out great. That's not uh, working. Here we go. Drawing challenge oh. time. Fred Flintstone. Whoops, I already put Brent on there with two points. You don't have two points yet, Brent. Stop trying to take points. <laughs> might as well. Might as well do yeah. It. Just leave it there. <laughs> uh, jerk. Oh, and we got, we got uh, Nick in here now. Let me add Nick. All right, time to tell, get my teacher to tell me I'm cheating. Draw Fred Flintstone. Fled Flintstone. I, I've been reading Runny Babbit to our daughter. You have too, honey, but <laughs> it seems to be rubbing off on me. I can't. I can't say words correctly anymore. Runny Anyone Rabbit. who? Yeah, it's a shell silver. Have you read book, that? You know where the. Oh, probably when I was when I was a kid. Yeah, it's like you. The whole book is written in a way where, like, instead of purple hat, you say purple pat. Yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we've been walking around saying everything that way, and it's starting to affect the way I talk. I keep saying things wrong. <laughs> you even said that with your name earlier. <laughs> oh my god, I did. Hey, Rillin. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah, Rob's saying he wants us to draw Orko from He-Man. Oh yeah. Yeah, we do still need to do that. That one we should, seems we like it would that. be simple, but I have a feeling it seems it's like, like it. the worst thing. Yeah, ever. he just has like a silhouette. He just has eyes and silhouette face. All right, guys, I'm yeah. ready with mine. Or right, when do we when do we show these all I'm at the same time ready. or what? Yeah, we do. You guys are gonna need to start because I basically just started. Uh, <laughs> I know I said I needed time, but I'm done. <laughs> so whoever. All right. I'm basically done. Yeah, me too, everybody. <laughs> Pretty much done. I think I can give a little more hair. Maybe that's a secret. Does not got a big lop of hair or something? Something like that. <laughs> All right, I feel confident now. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Man, me too. Nick's going to give you a run for your money, Brent. No, mine's oh. terrible. Push you off the throne. <laughs> <laughs> he is on a throne, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's on a pedestal. I don't know about this one. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like, like a... I don't know. A real stiff. <laughs> <laughs> really? Does anybody younger than us even know who Fred Flintstone is? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I talked to our kids about that because all they know is the, the vitamins. They have no idea who the Flintstones are, just that they have vitamins. Weird. Yeah. They probably <laughs> make so much money off the vitamins. <laughs> yeah, they must. I mean, like, you don't even see Flintstones 
vitamin commercials even i don't think like oh, we used to when we were kids but we used to so they literally just get the vitamins and have the container and go the flintstones okay what <laughs> that that song worked so well for us growing up that we still buy the vitamins for yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then we don't even need commercial yeah sing the song it's just right? us buying them flintstones <laughs> meet the flintstones. No, the vitamins commercial <laughs> Oh, wait, what was the vitamins? What was the vitamins commercial? I think it's the Mandela effect. Really? <laughs> oh, I love Mandela effects. <laughs> Can anybody think of the Flintstones vitamin song? I can't. Bug. <laughs> Honey, you okay? <laughs> Bug. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Bean over here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bean. Hey, we uh, got Jeff Dreyer saying, hey, Ray, great show. You inspired me to become an artist. So thanks, bro. Hey, you're very welcome. I, Hi, I Jeff. You even saying that. Thanks for coming. I, I've known him since we were kids. So he, he was uh, a classmate's younger brother and would hang out with us and stuff. And uh, it, I guess he... You know, wanted to get into drawing because I was into drawing and stuff, and that's that's pretty cool. Thanks for coming, Jeff. I'm ready. We're drawing okay. Fred Flintstone. So, you who wants to go first? All right, I'll show my terrible one. First. I don't want to go first. Let's go somebody else. Oh, nice. Oh, you look great. Big, big. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> oh, you did good with the, the thing. I guess I'll have to stop because now I'm seeing you guys. I'm getting details from you guys. <laughs> That's all right. The thing. <laughs> no, I'm going to do the thing. You need a win, Ray. Yeah, I, I do. Use I do. Use mm -hmm. that this <laughs> Let me just look up what he looks like and draw it. Can I just trace something? For the love of God, I haven't gotten a single point. Weeks of Brent. no points for me. Am I going next? Yeah. Oh, oh that's fantastic. On. Get out of here. Brent. Brent. <laughs> What's the point of you even showing mine now? I mean, that's Dang just that. perfect. He he is not. Look at his nose and his mouth and his like his perfect. beard, like his beard. What am I? Five o'clock shadow. Good grief! He even drew a bonus <laughs> Barney. Yeah, got a bonus. Let me go ahead and give you the, <laughs> yeah, you got Barney, Barney right. Barney. It even looks like Barney. Does God, it? I hate you. I'm loving it. Does not. The same time. It does look like Barney. It like feels like Barney. You got it so oh, well. the ears and the way the nose is. Dang, dang it, I got that wrong. <laughs> you even did the hair. I don't think I got the hair right. He doesn't have hair on the back of his head. That's why we're thinking he had a flat. I got that. Yeah, I, I was just noticing that because I gave him hair on the back of the head and it looks totally wrong, but I couldn't figure out what else to do with it. So I'm going <laughs> to... I guess I I'll just stop because I've been seeing you guys this. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and show mine because I'm I've seen you guys' stuff. Unless you want to go next, honey. Hmm? Oh, I you guess so. You want, you want to go next? Yeah. No point done? now. That's I know. Brand. Yeah. Let's just all quit, Brent. Oh no, yours is <laughs> oh, great that's too. <laughs> that's all. <awesome. laughs> let me. Oh, let me make you big. I like that. Uh... <laughs> But that's sort of like a more realistic version of him. Or it's like that. uncanny yeah. valley. Yeah, I didn't. You know? I didn't get yeah, his like ears it. and his hair. You put him in the exact same pose. Oh, though, good. His whole hands. <laughs> Let me see yours oh, again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, you did. Look at Brent. So those so little hands, oh, wait, like guys, sticking yeah. out back. You know, yeah, with fingers. Yeah, you remember mm -hmm. that, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. So, for some reason, I didn't get very much done on mine. I don't. It's almost like I wasn't here for half of it, but it doesn't really matter because this is what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of remembered he had a tie that was kind of mm -hmm. like jaggy. And then that's, I, I kind of gave him shorts. I don't know if you can tell, but <laughs> he had shorts on, right? No, he had nothing on underneath that. Gave man up his tucked into shorts. Look, everyone, it's Fred Flintstone. I did put a couple of speckles of facial hair on it and then i forgot to finish that but you know there we go good job why does no one ever clap when i do stuff jeez <laughs> we got uh we got someone saying uh here's lisa oh, that's, my, oh, lisa mom. that's my mom hey. 
Oh, oh. hey, Nick's mom. Hello, Welcome Nick's to the mom. Stream. That's fun. That's cool having a mom in here. Mm -hmm. And she says, draw Barbie. That would be a ridiculous one. We should definitely try to draw Barbie. Like the toy? <laughs> we also have or... <laughs> or the chair. Because well, yeah, like, she wasn't really, really in a cartoon. Barbie, so. I mean, kind of, you know. Yeah. But... She said like animated, like 3D animated stuff, I think. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the toy. Something like that. That would be fun. And would not look right when I do it. Yeah, we should do we also that. Have, uh, For Nick's mom. Oh, you, June Sadler in her in the chat. We've known her since Kansas. She's uh she's saying y'all should do Darkwing Duck. I love Darkwing Duck. <laughs> but as we've seen, when I try to draw a duck character, it doesn't turn out too well. They always look <laughs> they always look great. <laughs> yeah, they always look fantastic. Uh she's saying cartoon. the cartoon version. So there was a cartoon, huh? Okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can guess. Uh, hey, hey Nick, let me see your, your Fred again. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, we should probably all hold them up, actually. Oh, yeah, let's all hold them up. Yeah, let's do that. You guys need to yeah, judge. Like Please yours. comment. Sort of an almost family guy. Who's the winner? Uh, thing. You can barely see mine, can you? There we go. It's me, everybody. I'm the winner, see? <laughs> wow. Good job, I know. Brent. I know, dang it. But right, we have to show what Fred really looks like. <gasps> yeah, we just did. We showed yours. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you'll see it's way off. No, I don't think we're going to see that at all. So let me look up Fred Flintstone. That's awesome. Yours enough. looks perfect. I mean, it looks perfect. Like, like yours looks like an older version or something, maybe. But here's a. Uh... Okay, let me. Oh, I'm in the wrong window. Diagnab it. Go back to the right window. There we go. I mean that looks like yours though, but like yours looks more like yeah, like a real like an early version or something like the ang angular longer nose a little bit and stuff. But I mean you nailed the pose. Let me see mm -hmm. yours again. Hold yours up. <laughs> There's no pose. You just stand. Up. Yeah, it looks like exact. I mean, it does. It looks exact. <sighs> <sighs> I used to watch a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I mean, I watched him a ton. I even drew him and stuff. Like, you did. <laughs> yeah. Like, cause I, I had, I liked him enough that I, when I drew a caveman for my class or whatever, it, it looked like him sort of, but like a little different, but like it was still based on him. Cause I loved that show. Mm -hmm. I almost put a club in his hand, but I was like, I don't think he ever, but he's has a club quite Probably. a bit in his drawings. Yeah. That sounds, that I don't sounds think right. He ever I, used think he had... one. I think he might've. <laughs> Go to the new DC yeah. version. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. DC Comics. Okay. Here we go. They do some up. fun stuff with the, with the properties. Like, they were going to go traditional with them, I think, and then they just kind of... Yeah, they veered. definitely went a different direction, and it, it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. That feels like a <laughs> I got to disagree. Oh, look at it. Yeah, I mean, I would rather see the more cartoony style and whatever. So, yeah, let me... Oh, that is Dan Panosian. Okay. I mean, the drawings are good. Yeah, right. Obviously, but... Oh, did I close that? Okay, yeah, let me show Oh, yeah, the our... hat. Do you remember, like, for his, like... Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the yeah. Lodge. He was in a Does he call lodge. it the lodge? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, the lodge. Yeah. Wow. Let's bring back memories. Well, I'm gonna make my kids watch Flintstones. Who's it's the winner? It's a good show. It is. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll show our um, our uh, Flintstones cover that we did for DC before they mm. decided to go more realistic with it. It's just to... which we have yeah. hasn't actually been shown anywhere, uh, as far as I know. So uh, mm -hmm. hopefully they're okay with it. But we're it's gonna not gonna be it. used for anything. So yeah. Let me turn that off. This is my first time sharing a screen of something outside of a browser. Let me see if I can figure out how to do it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is our Flintstones cover. I remember so that. So we went, we went wow. pride in like, in cartooning. It's I haven't funny, seen like, that in a while. Yeah. Yeah, we were in 
California when we did this, right? Yeah, so seven years or something now. God, time's going. I way feel too like fast. Dino. Yeah, I love how Dino looks. Oh yeah, the way you did the kids riding the animals and stuff. Pebbles and Bam Bam. Here's Rob Norton saying, "Can can you have two winners for Fred? Brent's is perfect <laughs> as always, but Renee's is kind of my favorite interpretation, like slightly off brand." Yeah, I I agree. Hers was really good too. I like I like mix too though. It like feels like I know alternate <laughs> universe. Fred. They're like all awesome in their own player. way. What especially mine, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, draw man. He man. Okay, draw he man. Are there he any more? Yeah, that'd that be too be easy, easy for you. <laughs> I can't think about what his hair really looks like, or I it only sort of had like a. I could yeah. do my own version, but I don't think I could draw the cartoon. Yeah, that'd be that'd be tough. I think <laughs> we got to draw Orco wow, first, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rosie, Any more votes? Yeah. Anybody want to vote for me? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I need that. <laughs> no, I think it's Brent. Yeah. Brent wins. What do I mean, you know? <laughs> Good job, Talent. Brent. Talented Jeez. jerk. All right. Mm -hmm. What should we do next? Are we going to do Barbie for Nick's mom? Stuff? Or are we gonna, going to do uh, Orko? Hmm. It'd be funny if we just cool. never drew Orko, but talked about it every episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just we'll try get a prompt. Orko's coming right up. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's do let's do Orko right now. Ah, never mind. We're gonna do Barbie. <laughs> I don't know what a cartoon. I can guess, but Barbie. Yeah, well, yeah, like a cartoon version. I'm just gonna try to draw the doll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't the face think is I've ever seen. We'll we'll give it a try though. Yeah, mine's like, just uh... gonna be a girl in a bikini. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what that to was put her, her first. In or... I think that was the first Barbie she was in a swimsuit or a bikini. Yeah, that's, that, that's the one I was gonna do. Mm. Let's, yeah, let's do that. you guys know that. Um, did you guys ever watch the Toys That Made Us? Yeah, did you guys ever watch that series? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was that one that highlighted, I think it was, but they uh, someone went overseas and it was like. Not Milo Minara, but like it was like a sex cartoon doll, you know. And then they, uh -huh. the woman, brought it back over the states and said this would make a, the right size for a girl's play doll. So the original model that they used was off of like some sex kitten comic turned into a toy oh, look that the that. European toy was brought over the states and they mass produced it. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't know that. What do we got here? Oops, where did that go? What I do. Looking forward to see all of yeah, you draw here. women. Yeah, here's your mom saying toy doll Barbie. We will give that a shot. I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's going anywhere for me. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, this is this is rough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wonder who's gonna win this one, Renee. Well, I don't know. I've never drawn her. So, and it's been a while since I played with Barbies. Not me. Yeah, but they're at least a part of your life. I remember one time I uh, messed up my sister's Barbie doll hair, but other than that, I, I can't can't even picture what they look like. Our daughter has one, but I have I've barely seen it. She doesn't really. She doesn't play with them, which is fine. Did you Did you play with them? I did. I had my my aunt Sarah. She collected them, and so I kind of loved them because of that. So I collected some of them for a little bit. But okay, uh, Barbie's an alien, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, good, because that's what I'm drawing. So I, I figured I must be on the right path. Oh man. She has a tiny little waist. I know that much. Oh, yeah. Tiny neck. 
don't know. No idea what to do with her hair, clothing, anything. Like, I just don't know what. Give her like a, a I mean, it depends on which one you're doing, but like the 50s kind of poodle haircut, you know what I mean? With like the bangs and the ponytail no. and the, come Not on. Really. No, I don't really. It's like, I feel like I've heard of that term, but if, if you want me to try to picture it and draw it, I, I don't know what a poodle haircut from the 50s looked like. Well, po poodle skirt hair. No okay. idea what a poodle skirt is. <laughs> what? I don't have a clue what that is. Has a poodle on it? <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, okay. Maybe I actually do. Yeah, kind of a kind of a fluffy, like furry looking dress, sort of, and it has a picture on it. I usually had like a furry little sweater with it. Yeah. I think you're mixing. Okay. It. Like Am I mixing matter. things up? Okay. I don't know. I, don't I mean, they're know. kind of a weird material, like a belt. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's like kind of, like you said, fuzzy. Yeah, like like woolly, like a sheep. <laughs> like a sheep skirt. Why don't they call them sheep skirt? Or like a poodle, maybe. Poodles have fur. <laughs> There's a poodle on I'm it. That's why. Sheep. I'm describing sheep fur. Or whatever. Good God. All right. We did just talk about how much we draw women. Yeah. Yep. How's it going, Nick? Us men in the back. <laughs> I like drawing women. Yeah. <laughs> you draw great women. You do draw good women, Brent. Of course. If you win this one, I'm going to be real mad at you. So um, I'm drawing a brat stall, I think. Yeah, me too. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to. Are you? I don't know how to fix it. I don't know where to go. Proportions are wrong. Should we try to make it look like a toy? Yeah, okay. whatever you like. Oh, that actually kind of helps. I do remember they had weird uh, joints with holes in them. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> what? what do you mean? <laughs> they had weird little holes, like to keep the rubber from. It's funny. I fi I think I figured that out as a kid why they had them, but it was to keep the rubber from, like breaking. So they had little like. Holes oh, the little pen holes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the knee, on the knee joints. Yeah, I feel like the arms had them too, maybe. Like, so you could lift the arms up and down and the legs and stuff. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. How do I make this not look like a brat stall? Stop it, pencil. You have to make the eyes smaller. Oh, I thought I thought they had big. Thanks for the. They do tip. have big, but not not brat not brat size. Those are like their whole face. They're just like eyeball monsters. Yeah, they are. I'm usually so good about planning drawings to put on a page, but every time we do this, I, I just don't do it well at all. I went off the page a little. Oh, yeah. I remember they have tiny, tiny little feet. <laughs> You guys never had to keep track of like little Barbie shoes and tiny little like earrings and gloves. Uh, we, I, I had Ninja Turtle weapons. You had to keep track of those. Yeah. Star Wars figures. Man, I, you just, I don't know why this popped in my head when you said Star Wars figures, but I, I didn't have anything like that. But I remember my dad brought me home from like, it was like a used thing or whatever, but it was for Christmas. But I still don't know what the property was, but it was this set of tubes and you had these little white, it was like a sci-fi moon base or something. And it had these little figures that would go through the tubes and shoot around and stuff. Mm. And it was so cool to me at the time, but I, I, I have no idea. I, I've tried looking it up before, but I just don't have enough information to go on to figure out what kind of toy it was or hmm. anything. But they would actually they cool. move through the tubes, like vacuum? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like a like an air... like air shooting it around but I, I don't totally remember if that's what it was or not 
Um, but yeah, it was like a space station thing with these little white, white, hmm. maybe black ones too, or something. But yeah, with little spacemen, not like aliens, but like astronaut type characters. Hmm. I would love to see those again. I just have no idea how to how to look them up. I had a I had a weird astronaut toy set like that, but it, there was no like tubes. Oh, there was no like mechanical things like that. It was just there was remote control. Oh, really? What would yeah. what would it do? It was like a remote control like moon vehicle, but it had all these little like attachments. The top front could come off. I don't know. I found it a while back, but it was like. Cool. But when I finally found it, it was really nostalgic. So you got to find the tube, your tube toy. I know. I've tried a few times, and I, I remember at one point I felt like I was really close. Like I'd found something that was real similar, but it was like the name brand version of whatever I had. Because I, I think I had just some sort of knockoff toy, yeah. probably. But like, I think your parents gave you a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Like play, play with this too. These two, start. Yeah, and they just painted some army and you're white. You're just up toys with it. <laughs> Cleaning up the house. Yeah, that's what happened. I just remembered a detail of Barbie toys. A really important what? one. I'll show you. I'll show you when I uh when I reveal it. Oh boy. <laughs> we're good. we're taking our time on this one. Mm -hmm. We are, yeah. I'm I'm almost done. Yeah, I'm done with mine. Okay. Are you? Oh crap. Mine's terrible, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going for the that first Barbie. I, I remember it was on Pawn Stars recently. They bought it. With a black and white swimming suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I That's can't what remember I, what the design was. Yeah. It's what I tried to draw too. Me too. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I kind of forget what her bathing suit looked like though. Is she always in a bikini or something? You guys both reference. It was just the first Barbie was a specific outfit. It was like oh. a little one piece swimsuit. Yeah, I know that too, guys. In a bikini. I know Barbie stuff. <laughs> a one piece. All right. Oop, I gave that I gave it away. Now you're gonna win, right? Stealing stealing that and I'm gonna win. I'm gonna give her some weird random holes. Yeah, I think the holes <laughs> is like a the holes I is definitely a must. <laughs> give her a bunch of I holes. Sort of remember it. I thought they were known for having no holes. Someone oh uh Jose saying skeletor for a future challenge. That would be a fun mm. one. I love skeletor. He man's very popular. And then, uh Here's uh, Patrick Scoveguard saying, I had ate a carrot, and I have to censor this, but I had I had ate a carrot with poo on it. <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Patrick, but <laughs> that's my favorite comment. So exactly far. what he says. He yeah, that's what he means, yeah. It. Oh, hey, Jeff was saying that he liked uh, Renee's, the uh, Fred Flintstone the best. It uh, kind of reminds me if they were doing a police sketch on the Flintstones. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I see that. That's what these kind of are, right? What are, what are those uh, forensic sketch artists, you know? This is kind of yeah. cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you should title a segment something like that, right? Like, um, <laughs> that's essentially what we're doing. You're right, yeah. Trying to do it from, from memory and quickly. But we're the person saying the description in our heads. We're doing it all. <laughs> From what we remember, the true, yeah, the killer. We're, yeah, we're, we're the we're the person like describing the the criminal and the one drawing it. Oh boy, I got this one in the bag. Think? All right, I'm just gonna stop there. I'm gonna have I'm I don't want to get another piece of paper out because I'm using Bristol. But here's a I'm gonna draw a tiny little. <laughs> you using Bristol board on this? I, I don't. I don't have any normal paper up here. I'm kind of using one sheet for a bunch of it, though. Yeah. 
then you can sell it. Here's uh, Nick's mom saying uh, Brent's is the old version and Nick's is the new Fred. Yeah. No, Brent's the real version and mine is uh, garbage. <laughs> no. No, it's a new version. Mm -hmm. Nick, Thinking if yours ahead. is garbage, what is mine? <laughs> Who's going first? My mom's, my mom's retired now and she stays up all night, so she'll probably be bothering us all night. Cool. Good. She can vote bothering for us. Arby's. Yeah. You're bothering us, Lisa. No, we're <laughs> very happy to have you here. I think it's really cool you're here. My mom, my mom stays up all night too. That's funny. <laughs> <Really? laughs> yeah. So I guess that's we'll probably what we'll be doing. Yeah. Sometimes we'll talk at like three in the morning. She'll just call me. Are you still up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. See, honey, maybe someday our kids will call you in the middle of the night and want to talk to you. <laughs> Doesn't I seem likely right now, but me. maybe. They just have to make them food. When we maybe when they're in their forties. Does she have a bikini or a bathing suit? I was. I went with a bathing suit, like a one piece. Unless it wasn't. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's like a fifties bathing suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it bad that I can only think of them being naked? <laughs> I, I can't think of any. I feel like that. Like our daughters I is always like... naked. My sisters were always naked. That's just what I think of. I mean, they really were. I mean, all the Barbies in my backyard were naked. Yeah, every time you would see one out somewhere, it wouldn't have clothes on. They're all dirty. Did you see the yeah, Barbie mine looks movie? Like Did you see the Barbie movie? No, I haven't seen it yet. There's a, there's I keep a, hearing it's really good. There's a character kind of like that in it. Oh, really? <laughs> like just a... They played a, with too much Barbie. Barbie. <laughs> Who's first? Mine... My Barbie doubles as uh, Fred Flintstone's wife. Is that Wilma? What's her name? <laughs> Wilma. Mine looks. Mine looks just like that. <laughs> okay. What order are we going in? Here's Nick's mom saying, "Get over it. I'm up." <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm trying to show it. There we go. It's popping in and out. There. Wait, whoop. What's going on with my readout here? Why is it getting glitchy? Okay, there we go. Get over it, I'm up. That's funny. And she said that's because they had brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Boys probably are the ones doing that. All right, I'm ready as I'll ever be. Okay. Where are we? Who's going first? Let's just get it Let's over with first. and have Brent, Brent go first. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, no kidding. Just take the Band-Aid off. Well, I, it will make it funnier yeah, to see I, hours afterwards. Because we're just thinking of the toys. Or... Oh, oh cool. that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, man. Dang it, Brent. I really yeah. like that one. That's fun. What What mm -hmm. is she holding? Just a little mirror, like a little compact or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Renee was saying they had little accessories. I drew that. They oh, do. Okay, yeah. I don't know if she did. Yeah. But I know her hand couldn't have moved like that. <laughs> Nick's mom says, wow. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> wow. I just remember those cat eye glasses though too, I think. Like sunglasses. Yeah, that kind of sounds or she seems had those. familiar in some way, but Nick. Oh my yeah. I told you I drew I drew Wilma. Mine's just the <laughs> same. <Cool. old>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it funny like ours have Barbie Wilma. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> I think it maybe. I think maybe you're right. They're like zebra stripes, maybe. I can't maybe have... I'm. I'm not <laughs> sure. I, I want to say maybe they're straight stripes after seeing they're yours. So I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll go next because I have a feeling Renee's is going to be good. So let's get the goofy ones out of the way here. So here is definitely Barbie's head, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what she looks See, like after we started drawing it i think she's got like a really like circular forehead right doesn't doesn't she like in the Maybe. something about it makes me want to go like this that i definitely didn't pull off yeah, yeah i kind of remember those little injection like i know they yeah, had the like joints little... in the rubber but they had the right. little slits <laughs> in them yeah yeah that? i remember those knee. weird little on the looks knees like a vampire okay. attacker and only bitter on oh, the like arm. On the back. Yeah, it does look like that's what they looked like. They had two little <laughs> weird holes. Look at this little foot. Real little feet. 
So whatever. Okay, so it's terrible and it's dumb. Feet are always this is pointing down. Oh, they are, aren't they? Okay, mm -hmm. now I actually kind of remember you got that, that wrong. But now here's the only detail I know I got right. The what hand was always the hand was always fused together. I remember that, and I would chew on it. And so that's the little piece coming <laughs> off that I chewed on. You didn't know that. So that's a specific. That's a specific part. Yep, that's all I got. The chewed on fingers. <laughs> Sorry, Deb, my sister. I'm sister sorry. Excited about that? Yeah, she probably Barbie's loved hand. that I chewed up her Barbie's hand. Just nibbled on the on the fingers until like the plastic would kind of stretch out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I remember that. All right, Renee, show us your perfect Barbie. It's not perfect. Oh wow. wow that's pretty great. That's a great <laughs> I give that's her great really great. long. I ran out of room for her legs. They should be longer. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, that looks great. Oh, that's that's yeah, kind of Barbie-ish, right a little bit. Yeah, you got the feet. You got like the the hair and face and stuff. Definitely feels right to me. Now you have to look at that Barbie. Yeah, look up the first. Oh, yeah, Barbie. yeah, look up the original Barbie. Yeah. Alrighty, let me get to the right place. Okay, first Barbie doll. Watch, watch. You guys are all wrong, and it looks like mine. <laughs> the, hand, the hands just all gnarly. <laughs> yeah. That was all right. Present go. Whoops, I hit the wrong button already. Here we go. Share screen. First Barbie doll. So oh wow. So yeah, that oh wow, you guys did a good Oh, there job. you go. Oh wow, there's like different that's types. what I mean. Like she has she has that like yeah. round round forehead, you know, like they have oh, a yeah. face that's kind of like in there. Almost baby face. Yeah, so the that's, that's yeah, yeah. So the bottom. There's the one with. Sunglasses. Oh, look at this. Yeah, he had the, the glasses, glasses right. Through. Yeah, I got yeah. the glasses. Oh man, ooh, this is a tough one. Renee and Brent did so good, and also Nick and I did really good too. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, Rob Norton says, "Miss Delise for the win." <laughs> I think I think he might be right on that. I don't know. It's tough though because Brent yeah. looks like this picture to me too. Mm -hmm. Nick Nick got I think got the bathing suit maybe more yeah because I just did it straight across yeah I did it I straight did across it. is close mm -hmm. and I just didn't even do anything <laughs> I think they have a should we pull them up all four sure. Let me brighten my thing up so maybe you can see it better. Wait, wrong one. <laughs> Does that make it easier to see or harder? I need to just use pen um, or something. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Here's Nick's mom saying, all for the win. <laughs> Yay, I was included. Such I a mom too. thing we to say. I was a We're all winners. <laughs> Here's Adam Adam Meisner saying, uh, or Mrs. Meisner. <laughs> Hi, <Man>. Adam. <laughs> Says you guys are up during me hours. Yeah, we're we do these pretty late. Thanks for coming, Adam. Yeah. What's up? It's the vote. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's vote? Well, we got one vote for Renee already. Uh, June Sadler, which, by the way, if I didn't say hi, I think I mentioned that you were in there. But hi, June. Good to see you. Um, says Renee got it. So there's two votes for <laughs> Renee. I've only won the girl one. Or in the horse. In the, <laughs> and horse. the horse, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Which is sort of a girl thing. But here's Adam <laughs> saying his name as in a symbol what am i Meisner. what am i looking at as what an that i symbol? right that's an i isn't it oh is that an i <laughs> okay Meisner. Meisner, i got it <laughs> that's okay. like that, that was some sort of eye, right oh yeah okay <laughs> yeah, you're going it. too complex for me man look what i just drew <laughs> like a little child drawing <laughs> go spell she it looks, out she looks like betty boop's best friend you're betty boop <laughs> Oh man, mm -hmm. I'm not doing great with these. Well, the last All one right, should be so the left, the left-handed. 
Yeah, you want to do a left-handed one? That's a that's a travesty to do. Mm -hmm. Should we should we do axe wielder Joe or John um, with the opposite hand? <laughs> oh, that would make it harder <laughs> for him too, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, we obviously, nickel in. Right. I'm going to hand it. He has to draw with his left. We can do Orko. Yeah. You want to do Orko left-handed? <laughs> well, Orko, Orko's pretty easy, right? He's Is just he? like hands and a... You think, I think so. so. You wow. think so. You never know. <laughs> we probably should do Orko. I definitely want to do... Do Orko left-handed? We could try it left-handed. <laughs> That'll make it twice as hard. It's God. probably going to be difficult. I feel, like, I feel like my hand's in the way when I'm... Uh -huh. All right, so Orko <laughs> or Axe Wilder, what are we doing here? Orko. You choose. Yeah, you're the guest. You're the special, special guest. guest choose the one. Special privileges. I say we do Orko. All right. All right. With our other hand or just drawing them? Left hand, left hand. Okay. Okay. Orko. Oh, God. I got a later thing here. This is going to be so easy. Opposite handed. <laughs> I don't. I don't okay, remember so really Renee's what he looks got, like. Renee's got one. Brent's got one. For some reason, I still have zero, which doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem right. Doesn't. You're right, Brent. Brent, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna try drawing with a pen or something. That'll that'll probably fix it, right? If I draw with a pen. Mm -hmm. I'll make it better. This is. Uh... This is real weird trying to draw a character. You don't. You're darn right to this. I don't know what he looks like at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can. Man, I loved Orko so much when I was a kid, too. It's just been so long since I've paid attention to him. What did you like about him? <laughs> I don't know. He was funny or something. His Orko ness? Oh, yeah. I got to <laughs> update. Or I did, I did that already. Never mind. All right, Orko. -ness. I loved how Orko ish he was. This is so easy with left hand. <laughs> oh boy. Maybe maybe I should go back to a pencil. This is already <laughs> going. So I'm I'm also drawing in ink and left handed, and a character I can't remember. You got straight inks. I am going straight inks, just because my pencil lines aren't showing up very well in here. This is okay. So. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, like what does his body look like? Nobody knows. I know nope, he's got no like idea. Um, I wouldn't say I was a fan of Orko as a kid. <laughs> really? Oh, did you hate Orko? Is he I like hate him. I just, or something? I just didn't like he just was kind of a flat character, wasn't he? No, he was wonderful and fun and funny. He cracked me up. Orko. <laughs> what did he do? See, I'm I'm remembering his eyes, but I think I'm remembering them wrong. What did he do? He like was scared of stuff, and he, he was, like, like the snark of He Man. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah, but was he like? Did he do magic? Was he like a magician? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, I think he did magic. He's like a magic. He's a ma he's a magician. The magic. Yeah. But he was like, he would stumble and. I think he was like made for the. Like guy. he was like, he was in the cartoon before there was a toy. Right? Wasn't he kind of made for the cartoon to make it funny? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. And I loved all that kind of stuff. We need Any a... kind of dumb, silly thing was my favorite thing. Here's Adam saying, I kind of wonder how hard it is to draw with uh, like the trackpad or those ball mouses. Uh, I think Brent and I both have done that before back in the day. Yeah, we and said. yeah, not easy. <laughs> I'd say it's easier than with the left hand, though. Yeah, yep. I could do it all day long compared to doing left handed. This makes me feel like my arm's gonna break, <laughs> of or course, or my brain. <laughs> You've probably drawn like three orcos. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. I'm drawing an animated sequence. He's <laughs> <laughs> going, I'm orco. Here's Jeff saying, could we draw some characters from Rocco's Modern Life? Oh, man, that'd oh be fun because they have funny shapes and stuff and weird eyes. I love that funny. show. That's a great suggestion. Is that the theme song? Yeah, I, I don't, think he yells I, funky sounds, at the end. Funky? 
Fuck I got to do you, a cover. Dog. I did a cover for Rocco, and uh, I had never oh, watched wow. it because it's a little. It was a little. I was a little old for it, I guess, at the time. Oh Maybe. yeah, me too. I even I though I think I'm a year older than you, but yeah, no. Yeah. I never saw it. <laughs> I never I even heard of it. What's that? But the cover came out pretty cool, though. So yeah, I man, it. I want to see that. I guess I can't look it up now, but maybe after this, I'll look up. Or we're not doing this one yet, but remember, like Doug. I would like to see your cover. Oh, Dude, Doug was great. I love Doug. Doug funny and to... Patty mayonnaise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to keep a diary where I would draw myself as a superhero, just like he did. That's how inspired I was by by his show. Oh, I missed a I missed a message here. This is Jeff saying. Uh, oh, Ray, do you remember your dad's creations with pieces of wood? Oh, yeah, for sure. Taught me how to whittle with wood, and I taught my son last year. Oh, that's cool. Oh, man, that's nice to hear. I should do that with my own kids, but I, I never learned how to whittle either. But, yeah, my dad used to make these really cool statues, and, like, you could carve a chain out of a chunk of wood and stuff like that. Yeah, they, they were cool. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. That's nice that he taught you how to do that, and it stuck with you. <laughs> he also taught me how to take care of my car and change oil and things like that, and that didn't stick with me either. Bad son. I'm done, I think. Done oh, God, it. already? Yeah, I'm done. I've been talking too much again. There's just nowhere to go. <laughs> you just don't know what he looks like. Like, does he okay, have I'm shoes? Gonna... I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. His giant shoes. Yeah, he had had, uh, big sneakers, I think. Cowboy boots, probably. He had, like, yeah, buckle buckle boots. God, this is so hard to draw left-handed. <laughs> yeah, this one would have been hard with our right hand or our dominant hand. Yeah. Yeah. See, we all should be in frame like Renee is, where we actually see our hand. So <laughs> yeah. we're not just it's not just our heads. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll draw I'm surprised none of here. you are left-handed. Yeah, you, a lot of artists are. Hard to, to break the rules. Yep. I think I'm I am starting left-handed. to think I might be left-handed after this drawing. No <laughs> really? <laughs> Getting comfy with it. Yeah, really. Getting comfy with it. Na 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 na. <laughs> Who likes that reference? Na na na. Here's Nick's mom saying, enjoyed watching and learning. Y'all are so awesome. Have a good night. Oh, are you leaving? I thought you were up. Good what night. happened? No, oh, thank you very good much night. for tuning in. It's cool that you were mm-hmm. here. Good night, Mom. Get ready for Peace a fantasy up. football draft this weekend. Fantasy Ooh. football. You guys do fantasy football together, huh? That's fun. No, not her. She's going to set up the party with my sister. All my oh, buddies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the women are going to hang out with the kids. Oh, I see. I can't remember if you see the rest of his face or not. Hmm. All right, I'm ready. All right. Who's going first? Wait. Should we stick in the same order? I need yeah. a little bit. Who went first time. last time? I went first. Okay. Do it. That's pretty good. Oh, wait, are you showing it? Oh, crap. Let me see. I guess I'll just have to stop that. that. I like that. Um, Oh, wow. Okay. That looks good. That's what I don't know. I I remember having no legs. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's what I remember, too. Did he like float around? Yeah. I guess I'll just go ahead and show mine. Or, uh, or go ahead. Yeah. What order did we decide on? Or, I just show it. Let's see it. Okay. So I, yeah, I couldn't remember much. I also forgot one arm, but uh, I remembered his eyes sticking out of his hat. Oh, Oh, in his hat. Yeah. Interesting. I think I got that right. Sort of. Really? 
Look at how bad. Wasn't there these... another it's... character like that in a different cartoon? I think I kind of yeah, I feel like that. I feel like that's Fat Albert's character, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. No, I remember that too, but I, I feel like Much I might power. be right on the Orco thing, but I could be completely wrong. Here, here's why. Oh, oh nice. so look at that. But I have no awesome. idea. <laughs> so both of you guys did the eyes under the red. I feel like he had the eyes sticking out. I might be totally wrong. That would be interesting like to find out. I think there was a witch character that had the eyes sticking out of the hat. Not on He-Man, but on a different show. Oh, here, here's Adam he saying that his ears go through the hat. Oh, he has ears? Oh. oh, see, when I first drew this, yeah. I did have it sort of like a like a shape poking out of the thing. But I was like, that doesn't mm -hmm. look right with the eyes. So I just made it the eyes. Yeah. Huh, okay. It was ears. Let's see Renee's. This is going to be a tricky one to... Oh, Ooh, that's a real good one. <laughs> I have no Did idea work? either. <laughs> I haven't seen I him since. I think he did have a, an O on his chest. Yeah. Did he? I don't oh, remember that at all. Is curling out. <laughs> oh, hey, we got Mecca Jared back in the chat saying uh, thank you for showing up again, by the way. And he says, hi again, people. If you're not too careful, you'll end up a vampire like me. We have definitely been that way multiple times in our life. Renee especially enjoy staying up all night i'm more of a early to bed early to rise kind of guy she likes to stay up until the sun comes up <laughs> we can't do it so much anymore with the little ones but here's adam saying uh ironically renee's <laughs> looks like the final fantasy enemy oh yeah mm -hmm. i can it see that kind of final fantasy no wasn't there a little character in like final fantasy 8 or something like that that had looked yeah. like this maybe that was it Hold up, Orca. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait. Did Ray show? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you don't even remember mine? I think Is that how bad sorry. it was? <laughs> sorry. Here, I'll show you again. Era. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember. Where's it going? So you guys drew him with hands. I didn't do that. I, I kind of remembered him having little, like, raccoon-looking hands. Uh, Orco, he, man. Oh, it was his ears. Okay, let me share this. Okay. Uh, which button is it? It's that one. And then I was picked up <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I just got yeah, I feel like I feel like Renee nailed this one, yeah. I don't think yeah. so. I didn't get the O. I didn't get the hands. Um, you got that cloth the mask over him. Yeah, I did. I, I, I did the mask over him. Yeah, you get the mask and you got the O. We're gonna have to hold them. Yeah, up again. yours yours definitely feels a lot like a lot like Orko. Th this one kind of feels like was it Brent's or one of them? One of them. I didn't have the ears though. We gotta hold them all up. But I I did the eyes through the hat. We forgot his wheels. Right? You Look, gotta make the wheels. screen bigger. You have wheels? Oh, okay. I think you might have got them. Man, ooh, that's tough. I think <laughs> I like Nick. Yeah, I mean Nick's. he's got I like Nick's too. No, I yeah, like Nick's I like of... I like Prince and Renee's. Prince has got a. He looks like he's about to rob a bank. Like he's got a like you know what I mean. Like hold it up again, Brent. Like there's something about it that's cool. It feels like yeah, like yeah. Like mm -hmm. like a nerd like a nerdy orco. If you'd have shaded around his eyes, you would have nailed it. I think. For yeah. sure. Shading with my left hand's a bad idea. I it just, does feel I a lot like this. The ears. Yeah, the it does. It does. Like the way that one is, but then like Renee feels like if you drew him in a comic though, like mm -hmm. super yeah. sloppy, super like long sleeves mm -hmm. and hanging down. So it's weird because like okay. is the assignment the more accurate or is the assignment the more charming drawing you know what i mean like which one is it yeah. i don't know probably more accurate you know um her like hers feels like orco in a way like like you said kind of like if it was yeah. like a more serious comic or something maybe yeah, like yeah. you get a cool mm -hmm. version of them um i noticed nobody said mine <laughs> no, no one like no one likes ours it's all good no one like i liked yours your yours kind of felt like uh like the the toy figure here too. 
Yours look more like a finished drawing, too. I wouldn't have yeah. guessed that was your left hand. <laughs> yeah, let me see yours oh, again. Nick. Mine's trash. Trust me. It's like it's drawn with a sharpie. It looks like a yeah, like a like a ten second no, sharpie good. drawn, or a ten that minute left handed drawing. It yeah, looks no, good. I'm annoyed that you guys did better know. with this one too. <laughs> We're gonna need votes on this Can one. I, I don't know. Plan. Yeah, everybody in chat, please vote for who drew the best orco because I don't I don't know here. Renee's look good. Brent's look good. Mine look great. Nick's look good. <laughs> I feel like I deserve some points for having something in hey, do, the hat. Do, do we hat. count the, the guest votes or no? Because I think Brent definitely won the first one. I give Renee the second one, Barbie, and then this one here is the toss up uh, between yeah, the yeah. two. I don't, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we count guest votes too. Yeah. Adam, Rob. Anybody in there? Mm -hmm. Got any, got any points? <laughs> You mean to show mine again? <laughs> yeah, I feel like Renee's was, captures the spirit with the spot. I think the spot black would have made the difference, but the spot black from Renee does it, I think. I think I, I think don't know. It, there's no O, there's yeah. no hands. He has feet. <laughs> no ears. Here's uh, Adam mm -hmm. saying, I guess Brent's is the closest to actual Orco, but I like Renee's the most. Yeah, I'm yeah. about I'm about where he's at, yeah. Here's somebody giving me the pity vote. <laughs> yeah, I get the pity vote. Here's uh, Rob saying, Ray, yours looks like a clan version. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. It, yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> kind of does. That guy's the fairy. That's a mess like that. Sorry. <laughs> What's that? Wasn't there like a witch on She Ra that had eyes poking up out of the mask? Maybe. Or inside the mask. Witch. Or like. Now look up the Fat Albert character that has the... Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my god, I think I might be actually mixing up this character. Yeah, okay, you, you, let me show this now. A little bit. Is that a kid? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that kid that's grounded. Yeah, that's yep. the eyes to the mask. That's funny, so I was kind of mixing the two together. Oh. I don't, I barely oh, even funny. remember She-Ra, but I did, I did watch it. Madam Raz. Madam Raz? Oh wow. I did. I did watch it. Yeah. I even remember the name Madam Raz now. That's weird. You do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is funny. You weren't really getting them to. I more. think I was. <laughs> I, I remember as a kid thinking like how they drew it to make it look like it was a hole in the hat, you know, like stuff like that would stand out to me. Um, look at this. Look at this rip off of Beauty and the Beast looking guy. It's probably before Beauty and the Beast. Probably was. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so got any other vote? Uh, here's uh, June voting for Nick. Nick got a vote. We got, uh, oh, Rob was saying Madam Raz on She Ra had the eyes. Okay, yeah, I got them mixed up. All right, so we got vote for, let me close this part. Uh, vote for Renee. Um, Another vote for Nick, but it's his mom. Do we count that one? <laughs> no. I'm kidding. That that counts. This, yeah. Uh, vote for Nick. I'm losing track of the vote. So uh, two for Nick. Um, we aren't really going to count mine, but we'll say one for Ray. Uh, we got Renee. Oh, Jeff's voting for Nick, too. So we got one, two, three votes for Nick. Oh, I'll count. Got... I vote for Renee, so. That's where we're at. <laughs> okay. No. Who, who am I voting for? You you won the fair and square. Renee's no, gonna look really mine's, good. Mine's mine's terrible. Nah. It's gonna be a three way tie then, unless we have a tiebreaker. Yeah, I think I, I think we. Uh... <laughs> no, Nick got three. No, I think he got no, three. I'm saying, I'm saying I think Brent got three. The game. Yeah. Me, you, and Nick. one, two, Ray. You three. still have, maybe you'll get the fourth one. Oh. Okay. A four way tie, yeah. No. You picked the character, right? <laughs> <laughs> to your advantage <laughs> didn't didn't help me, didn't help me one bit. No, pick a character. Pick the oh, you want me to pick a character writer. for the you gotta give Nick a point. Oh, yeah, I gotta vote, is what you're saying. Um, hmm. 
Who am I going to vote for? No, I'm saying pick the fourth character so we can have this tiebreaker. Mm-hmm. Oh, pick the character for the next one, I think. for the next round. <laughs> <laughs> Becca Jared saying Ray, Ray got one, but it's a pity vote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it, Becca Jared. I need something. <laughs> but all right, so I like who, who I like the right I like. I like the right-handed game with uh, us not looking up the character more than the left-handed. Game. <laughs> yeah. The left-handed game yeah, is the, a nightmare. The left ones, yeah, it's it's just painful. <laughs> I would have definitely shaken. <laughs> Although I don't think mine would look that much better if I used my right hand on that one because I just didn't know what I was doing. But okay, so we did we did we figure out who won that one then? Or no, we're doing a we're doing a tiebreaker. Are you okay with a tiebreaker, oh, okay. Nick? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Give Nick the right point. <laughs> Nick gets a point. And it's, uh, mm-hmm. and then Ray will win the fourth one, and then we'll have, a, have to really do a head right there <laughs> between all of us. Pick your favorite character, Ray, that you grew up drawing all the time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> see, it would have been it would have been uh, Garfield, you know? But I did that one. You nailed Garfield. <laughs> it didn't turn out right, so. Okay, Never I'll again. Never um, <laughs> Oh wait, we had a really good one in the chat at one point too, didn't we? Uh, that I that I was like, oh yeah, that'd be fun. R- Rosie the robot. That one's that one's almost impossible. That's harder than Orko. Like, <laughs> yeah. do you remember any of her? I sort of remember her, maybe. Well, Rosie. Hmm. What do you think, Nick? That's, that's from, from the from the Jetsons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's enough of a vague idea where. We could pull something off, I think. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's it'll be interesting. We haven't done a robot, robot yet. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Let me see here. And we're doing left handed or right handed? Right handed. Let's, let's, yeah. Let's just, dominant hand. Normal? Thank God. Let's just knock this out. Dominant hand, you said? Yeah. 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 All my hands are dominant. Oh, this is easy. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Simple. No, it's not. Oh, boy. <laughs> I know. This is weird. <laughs> Oh, we had uh, Mick and Jared suggesting Thundar the Barbarian. I definitely watched it. I don't know if I remember him at all, though, like what he looks like. I can picture him. But if I saw him, I'd be like, oh, yeah, obviously. But And then uh, Thundar is the guy with the sun sword. Boy, I'm having a hard time picturing that one at all. I remember when I got sun sword and lightsaber mixed up when I was a kid. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, we're called lightsaber sun swords. Did you get beat up? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, you, you guys remember how I said I think I might be able to do this one? I was wrong again. <laughs> yeah, this one's the hardest one we've done, I think. I haven't seen Jetson since I was a kid, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> It's like I can sort of picture her in my head, but it's just not not happening. Did she have a butt? I feel like she had a butt. <laughs> she was all Here's butt. <laughs> she was yes. all butt. She was all butt. Did she have a butt? <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I feel like she had a butt. I don't know what to say. Yeah, I think she did. I don't know. Oh man, yeah, this is getting so much harder than I thought it was going to get. And does she have? Does she have like wheels, or is she floating? <laughs> that that's something we can't. Yeah, we can't <laughs> say. But I, I don't I feel know. Like I, I know, know, but do you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm guessing so, floating because everything was floating. Oh, why is this so much harder than I thought? Oh my god, I'm having trouble with her. Like every part of her, her 
arms, her <laughs> torso. <laughs> yeah. I can't even picture what her head looks like, any part of her head. Or... Uh -huh. I'm, I'm picturing some stuff, but I it, like ain't, it ain't looking like Rosie. Kind of a silhouette going on. Yeah, I'm trying to do that too. Like, get the. That's like, why I said, does she have a butt? Trying to picture. Oh, she had a butt. I can't picture any part of her face. Did she have a face? I thought I I was gonna get her face because like I I can feel it in my head, but it just isn't isn't happening. I'm way off. Have we been doing this for three hours? Good God! Mm -hmm. It hasn't been fifteen minutes. We've been watching Rosie like for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm done. I think I'm. I think I'm gone done. as far as you can go. Sort of, yeah. Without. Hmm. Like even trying to draw George Jetson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that'd be hard. You know, I think your Fred Flintstone sort of had. He's uh, like a skinny, he's like a skinny something. Fred, sort of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, now I can kind of picture him almost. <laughs> I bet I could draw him real good. <laughs> <laughs> draw him next to Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> I can draw him real good. <laughs> my, my Rosie the ro robot is going to murder the whole family. That's what I've drawn. <laughs> she is, she's evil. Oh boy. How are you doing, Nick? <laughs> I don't know. It's a complete guess. It's a complete guess at this yeah. point. Wait, did she have I added the robot butt whenever uh you guys started talking about that, which I don't think it's did right. But... <laughs> I think she sort of had a butt. I think I'm yeah. right. She had a... Does she have a nose though? That's what I keep going back to. Feels like she should have a nose, but I can't think of any nose that would look right. I can't think of any part of her face that would look right. Wow. Here's Jeff. I thought Sam I might know this. That character drawing. That'd be good. Ooh. Which one? That'd be real fun. Especially out of memory, because it'd be like which which character? Weird. Just I don't any Mortal Kombat you were saying. Mm. Here's Nick's mom saying, this is better than watching my crime shows. All right. That's, that must be amazing. I love crime shows. This is like a crime scene. <laughs> it's a crime scene, yeah. Oh, and uh, Mecca Jared was telling Adam that, that Thundar is the guy with the sun sword. Mm -hmm. And Adam was saying, it's a pretty neat show. He says he's obviously too young for it, but I watch few. Stop rubbing it in, Adam. Jeez. Jack Kirby designed on that show. Oh wow, really? I know, like Alex toasted a ton of. Oh, maybe, stuff. maybe it was, maybe it was her. Oh yeah. I think yeah, I think you might be right. Let, let me check. Has yeah, Jack Kirby yeah, done? Jack Kirby, Jack Kirby did Hanna Barbera. Jeff Darrow went and worked under him at some point. I oh, think. Really? Oh I think right, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm trying to draw with my my uh, Cintiq pen <laughs> on paper. That's not going to work. I'm going with wheels. <laughs> Adam saying we should draw characters we've Funny. never heard of and see how close we get. That'd be fun. Just like a so brief description. Get, describing it. I get that with Snarf yeah. or whatever his name was. Oh, yeah. Renee okay. did kind of do that, didn't she? No, it was Jack Kirby created or made the character designs. Oh, really? Yeah. You can cool. you can see old drawings that he did. It's kind of cool, but Toth, I think. Oh, hold on. Yeah, Toth uh, did the. I guess he did the main character designs. I don't know. They both worked on it. No, Toth was the main guy. He's got like thousands of those character sheets in the original yeah. art market. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I feel, I feel like she needs a nose, but it's just not going to be right. No, that's not right. 
Nope, shouldn't have done that in ink. Whoopsie. <laughs> oh, you're inking it. Uh huh. Yeah, just straight, straight ink. That's how confident I am. <laughs> it's hard right. to just add a bunch of like they're such simple designs. It's hard to not just. Yeah. Uh, I think you I gotta get the lines just right. right. You know, every line matters on these on these old characters. Man, I messed it up with the nose. All right, I'm done. <laughs> that nose really, really ruined it. Before that, it was perfect, and then I messed it up. I'm kidding. You guys still going? What kind of masterpieces are you guys doing? You guys can start showing it if you guys are done. I'm done. I'm done. You'll get then whoever's drawn will get all the ideas. Yeah, you're, you're gonna, I'm not copy gonna my add. Perfect. I'm not gonna add anything. You're just fleshing it out, detailing it. She's cheating. <laughs> it's just real sketchy. I'm trying to darken it. Here's uh, Adam saying, just like some Mortal Kombat character who is only in one game or something. That'd be fun to do. Hmm. We also got some sort of spam uh, comment that I'm not going <laughs> to. Ooh, we're the big they, time. They we're a big time a promotion Starting of our, our channel. Yeah. They're going to help us promote our channel. Who's that? Oh, good old lofty cloak on on Twitch. You yeah, showing you're you showing yours, right? Mm -hmm. All Let's rosy, pop pop up. You go first. <laughs> I'll go first. Yeah, Renee, are you done? Yeah, I'm just Pencils shading. Down. It. You're shading. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll allow it. All right. Ah! <laughs> you got that butt. <laughs> got that donk on it. <laughs> that robot donk. We kind of did the same. <laughs> I did one wheel. Yeah, you did one wheel too. Yeah, I, I think feel you like I, I might have gotten that part right. I, think I also can't remember. Know. What's that? I don't think she had a nose. <laughs> I didn't add yeah, a nose either. She... I didn't yeah, know. no, I shouldn't. Have, I shouldn't have added the nose after I added the nose. The the whole time I was drawing, yeah, like, with blank, nose. I always thought she had just like saucers for eyes, just blank circles. I thought Could've maybe been. not. Not not like dead. Soulless eyes like these. <laughs> I didn't have those. I also couldn't remember if you had one you like your antenna arm. on top. Yeah, that's, sure. that's some straight up drawn with my daughter kind of fingers there. Um, so yeah, I couldn't remember if she had one antenna on top or one on each side or all three. I did the or one. Of those. Maybe none. I Maybe did none of that. Antenna. You did one on top. Okay, let me make Brent bigger. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, oh dang it's it. So cute. Oh, yeah, Does we both did TV the apron. Face? Yours looks a lot better than mine. That's what I remember her, but I don't think I, don't, I think she probably did it. That's what I was it thinking. That's right, though. Does she have a TV head? Oh, I forgot to even put up her banner thing. Justin said no TVs wouldn't exist. <laughs> True. Nick? The TV we um, knew that. We right, here's mine. Mine is like, oh, oh, mine is like the despair, like, you know? Yeah, yours, yours looks a little made. sad, yeah. I added this doily thing at the, I know I thought she has a doily thing maybe, but then I yeah. I, I guess the antenna makes more sense now. Like a so. made, like a, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that doily thing though. You did a good job mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Looks cool. Yeah, I'm think, never going to win with front. Like it was one of those, I don't know. What's yours? All right, pretty lady. Tell us what you got. Oh yeah, that that looks like. Oh it. yeah. That looks like it. <laughs> I she's like it. Knife. I like it. George Jetson. She's had enough. Still fr still George. <laughs> oh, that's great. Man, you killed it, honey. You killed it. <laughs> I don't know what she looks like. Like we gotta. I think, I think that got edge tape is there. right. The like cylinder with. Yeah. I was trying to do that. It just didn't didn't happen. Because I, I remembered it sort of having rounded edges and stuff. Pull up, but... pull up Rosie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here she comes. Let's do Rosie a little, 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 little Rosie, the Rosie O'Donnell cartoon. <laughs> oh, wow. You guys all got aspects of her real close here. Okay. Let me share. Check it out. 
I mean, yeah, all three of you kind of got aspects of it. I got her donk though. <laughs> she did have a butt. She did have a donk. A on oh yeah, robot. I think you went for the donk alone. Oh hey, she's got a doily thing on her head here. Oh, yeah. she does have oh, yeah, Renee Look at got the got side, the side antenna. Mm-hmm. And it was and side I, antenna. And the face Dang. is real accurate. You were a big Rosie fan, huh? <laughs> Me? Yeah. yeah, I did like her. <laughs> yeah, you got a real she's good. Nasty. I haven't seen her though in like 20 years, so. <laughs> Are we gonna hold them up? I think Nyx is pretty close too. Nick yeah, is pretty close Nyx is awesome. Yeah. And Nick, you and Nick, but mm-hmm. oh, you got the one wheel. All right, everybody in chat, vote for who did the best Rosie the Robot from the Jetsons. If you have any idea who that is, unless you're some youngin like mm-hmm. Adam. Yeah. Oh man, those are all think, really good. I think I got so, her personality <laughs> the best. Yeah, the murder. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, I well, got the antenna. I think you nailed the, uh, yeah, they got all the design elements. You got the yeah, antennas the out the side of her head. Yeah. The cylinder yeah. head. I thought it was a toaster head. Um, no, look at this one, buddy. I thought it was a future TV head. Oh, look, look at her face here. Look, she looks evil in this one. Oh, yeah. She would always snap with the knives. and mm-hmm. She was always killing people. She's... Jetsons were like her third family. Yeah. You know. Here we got to vote for Renee because she dared to murder George. That was the previous George. That was a different guy. That was the <laughs> previous family she was with. Yeah, I think Renee's looks the most. Did you get the, the hat? Anybody else want to vote? Okay. Yeah, once Do I, I started calling her face, I realized I had no idea what her head looked like. <laughs> yeah. We got Apparently, uh, June voting for Rosie with the kill or uh, Renee with the killer Rosie. So you got two <laughs> votes. Yay. I am never ever gonna win this one. That might be the closest <laughs> I've gotten on one though. Or at least you got the wheel. Similar. Yeah. I got the wheel. I got the apron. I got the donk. Yeah, arms. I gave I her, her. I got her Pinocchio. Gave her like nose. Tube, tube Dr. Octopus arms. <laughs> that looked good though. I, I, did, did, good like her. I did like the that, yeah. I did the tubes as well. What uh what are, what do her arms look like? Are they yeah, just tubes? This robot arm. What? It looked like there was joint, like oh. a joint. Oh, there yeah. were joint hands. Mm-hmm. I gave Oh her yeah, hand. she's got total robot, robot arms. Oh wow. I mean, yeah, even like clampy hands. Oh, I gave her those. Oh wow. I got clamps. Did you get the clamps? Yeah, I did, yeah. I did the C clamps too. Did you but give her three make... buttons? No. No. Mine has an apron instead buttons. of buttons. Yeah. So she I didn't shaded. have an apron. She's topless. She is to- <laughs> sort of topless. <Ooh. laughs> I don't even know what to make of that. Yeah. That's hot. The three red bumps. <laughs> well, so far we got the two votes for Renee, so. I think Renee's the winner for sure. Probably. She takes the cake. Oh, Adam's saying, (laughs) I watched a few episodes. I think Renee takes it because of the single wheel. Hey, I had a single wheel. Yeah, we all. But I guess you really (laughs) had like a wheelchair set up. Oh, yeah. She has like a a rolling chair. Oh. 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 She had like the chair. She had two wheels. Mm-hmm. We're all oh, wrong. Yeah, Nick got two like, wheels. I'll deduct a point. Oh, I put them on legs, though, so mine doesn't really count. That's funny. I really saw it with as one big wheel. Like, like how, like Brent, you did that too, right? Yeah. Let me let me see let me see everybody's again. <laughs> mine uh mine <laughs> fell behind my mine fell behind my desk just now, so mine's gone. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so we all did the same kind of one wheel thing. I think Renee definitely is the yeah yeah. I think Renee won that one. We're all, we all knew it was one wheel, but here's Adam saying he was between Renee mm-hmm. and Nick. Yeah, yeah. Nick's had a had a good look to it too. I don't even get a pity vote that time. Dang it! <laughs> I like your stare, she, the rosy stare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, we're just standing in the corner of everything, staring. You got you her psychopath eyes. This, this is right before she murdered George. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. She, she had just told a lie and her nose grew and then 
He killed Robots George. Can't lie. It, unless the, you're AI AI advanced to a point where it could lie, and that's when George knew, and she had to be ki- he had to be killed. Uh-huh. It's a whole story. You don't remember that story? Oh yeah, that was the the movie. <laughs> well, well done, honey. Let me give you your point. Uh, like that. So I think Renee took home the win. Unless we do another one, Renee took home the win today. Woo! Yay, honey! <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever win one. <laughs> no, I figured murderous you would. robot for the win. Yeah, it really did look good. I kind of want you to like ink. And color. That's fun. <laughs> that was fun. We got another combo here. That was fun. Yay! Mm-hmm. Oh, lost it. Lost it again. Thanks for playing with us, Nick. That was fun, guys. Thanks for You're having awesome. me on. Sure. Mm-hmm. Here's Mecca J- Jared saying he's got to get going. It was nice seeing you again, everyone. Nice seeing you too. Thank you for showing up. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming. Love seeing people coming back. That's fun. We should probably, right, well. and I feel bad because Don's is next. But it's, it's two o'clock in the morning. So true. I did tell him we were going to do I, it. I, know. Oh, I feel like we should probably oh, do it. Awful. He's been so amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, like what's I, the next? What's going on? Yeah, we, we had another rev- artist art review. review, so we sh- we should probably try to do it, but maybe maybe keep it a little well, quick. But think? I don't want to do it quick. Like I want to focus on it. He's been so patient. You know, yeah. like I don't know. Well, let's we'll just stay up another hour, though. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> we could probably do it in like 15, 20 minutes if we. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Bit. Is that too far? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Okay, maybe not. What do you? Whatever. You, yeah. Yeah, usually they take like forty-five minutes. It seems like to an hour. Does it take that long? Maybe I'm. I, I am pretty bad with managing. Like, I think I don't want to rush like through his art. You know. Yeah. Like he deserves the attention. Let's, let's show one page, do a sneak peek. Yeah. yeah that's a good idea. That's a good and idea. Then take one and say, "Well, finish." Sorry, Don. I think I even we told his you. mom that we were doing it. So got to watch next. You no, know, we're disappointing his mom as well. But yeah, we'll we'll get a little sneak peek and we'll make sure that we do it first next time, and get better with our timing on these things. It seems like one review fits pretty well. Like it'd Maybe be cool to get two it's in, fun but doing two. But you're like you're 20, right. Like the, the... Twenty no reference character drawings. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, cool. so here is if it's going to load. Yeah, so Don Edwards, who we've known, again, since the digital webbing days, um, has always mm-hmm. been a really great supporter of ours. And this is his book, Z Lunar. Um, and he draws some cool characters. I've always really enjoyed his work and the energy in it and, and just sort of he's definitely got his own style and stuff. Um, we're going to be looking at his book here. He's got a there's a 28 page comic, I think, and. He's got some cool stuff going on here. I like the way he represents the planets and stuff. Let's do a quick flip through. Flippity flap. Flip, flip. Not going to show too much. <laughs> All right. Oh, I saw a planet thing. Cool. That's going to be fun. Meanwhile, if you want to check out some of his art, go over to Instagram.com slash Dontacular. He's got some cool stuff on there. Just look at how much like work he puts into like his pencils. Yeah, he does. And he's he's full production too. Like, here's his Wonder Woman. Oh, there's the Wonder Woman. I saw that the other day. Yeah. He's so strong. Yeah, he's he's good with action, good with just making stuff look kind of cool. He does a ton of I like that he does this. He he does a lot of um creator own care like for other people, he'll do drawings of their characters. Um, and that's always neat to see. Yeah. Like, I think this might be one solar. Cool. Good, Ooh. good anatomy on that. And he's got the, you know, you can't do it, but. Oh yeah. He's got this character, the unemployed duck. He could do a good <laughs> dark wing duck or, yeah, like, duck or any of those. he draws a great duck. He draws under the table. But. All right, it's so Don, I apologize that we didn't uh, mm-hmm. we we didn't manage our time well, but we will focus on yours next week and make sure we take some time on it and and you know really give you some good thoughts and 
whatever. We took too long on this one. Z Lunar. Can I zoom out any? Can I get the whole thing in there? Oh, here's a uh, Jeff also voted for Renee on that last one. So <laughs> Adam saying just do it when you get the time and do it well. Okay, that's probably a good idea. Thanks. All right. I guess that wraps up our show for tonight, right? Do you guys want to see this again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should show Nick's stuff one more time. I, that's where I was that. going. I just ended up mm -hmm. on the wrong tab, so I decided to show that octopus. I really want to draw that character. Well, that would be awesome. I would love it if you guys yeah. did the character. So here is Nick's stuff. Here he is on Twitter. Nick Patara. You can follow him pretty much anywhere with that name, I think. Yeah, there's a spoiler oh, yeah, free. We had the PDF done and we sent it out to a bunch of outlets. So that's a pretty good spoiler free review of Axe Wilder, some oh, of the sequential awesome. pages and stuff. Although I hate that drawing of that he had drawing of John. Where? Of course, the top left. Look, it's so blown. I, I I had this idea. I was super into it. I was like, he's gonna get puffier. As he gets me meaner, like kind of like the Hulk, but then it, it came out so terrible, and it's the one drawing I would have fixed in the whole book. And then people use that page because it's a bloody page all the time. So don't mm -hmm. show that page, Ray. Turn it, turn it, turn yeah. to the next oh, page, okay. please. For okay. the love but of it God, it looks awesome though. So I <laughs> oh, it's it's terrible. You're being it's a silly terrible. goose right now. These all I like the awesome. cartooning I just on that. We didn't go through the PDF at all. I had the PDF that I was going to flip through earlier in the nah, show. That's all I good. It's all good. There's some big spoiler moments like halfway through. Like when we're done recording, I'll tell you some of the weird spoilers in it. Um, Look at this. This is one of the coolest character designs of all time. Just Lord Fang. Fang. Like I the love that puzzle character guy. so much. Yeah, he's got oh, some... cool. Yeah, this guy. Oh, yeah. He's he's the, yeah. He's the puzzler. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, awesome. the cool the the part I liked about Lord Fang was uh, he's got spiders for eyes. So, like, when he looks and when he we see him in the next oh, book, when we see him dude. more, as he looks around, the the spiders will move as he's moving his eyes. Mm. You know. Oh, so. I love that. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Oh, that's so creepy. Oh, I can't. I can't get this in. Yeah, it's on Twitter. You can't really zoom in more. But uh, and then uh, man, the painting by Das Pastoras. I wonder if I have it up here. Oh man, this is gonna be bad. Check this out. I'll show you something cool. Oh, here I, I did get, I managed to open in a new tab so I can get a little closer on it. That is such a cool concept, the spider eyes. Oh, man, that's so creepy. And I'm sorry, you did the colors too, right? Uh, Mike Garland did the colors on those pages. He's my main colorist. Mm -hmm. I got to show you guys. Some, oh, it's going to be a mess. Yeah. Here's Adam Hang saying, oh, that is a neat skeleton guy. Like check out. Oh, and uh, it's a weekly show. Yeah, Adam, we do this every week now. So every Wednesday mm -hmm. at ten ish o'clock, usually late. Nine uh, my time. I hope it's in. yeah, nine oh ten Eastern, I should say. Yeah. So this only oh, one in the morning. Good for you, Brent. <laughs> yeah, check this out. Check this out. So this is uh Ooh. hand hand paints it with the spider's for eyes. Awesome. Oh my god. That's the cover to volume uh two. Oh, oh that's sick. That is so and then, like, cool. Is that the all the bloody painting? Yeah, yeah, I bought oh the paintings god. from them. So this is why it's expensive because oh, the, the deal I work. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, it's the original. Oh wow. So that's I got like all the originals here. So like every everything that he did for me, and he's so good. I gotta get these like in the safe somewhere but uh he drew them all oversized for me too but like here's the cover of one and it's freaking awesome awesome so did you yeah. photograph those paintings to print them or did you get a huge scanner i have no idea how he does it but he gets them to me i, I think he'll like darken them a little bit uh digitally because these are a little bit softer than the print mm -hmm. the printing but uh he doesn't do any dr extra coloring yeah. He just goes in and uh, I think he darkens them because they look a little uh, richer in yeah. the uh, in the finals. But uh, like some of these pages, man, like this one here is so good. I know you showed this one before, but I'll show you some of this. 
like when John shows up here. Oh, you got the no. pages too. Dang. Yeah, yeah, I bought the pages. This is why he got expensive to work with him. So, <laughs> yeah. like his Worth back it. muscles and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just Worth beautiful. It just a little yeah, bit. Stuff. This is a whole sequence. Like, since it was an epilogue sequence, it was like I wanted to show how he cleans his skulls, and so like before he, so like here he's tying a rope around him. Mm, yeah. Cool. Oh wow. And then uh, he tosses them in the water. Love that water there. Oh, wow. And then in, in, in the water, there's like piranhas. Hang on, I'll show you one more. <laughs> yeah, keep so, going. <laughs> so then this panel like is incredible right here. I can't Ooh, believe yeah. people can watercolor like this. And then uh, piranhas. That's watercolor? Yeah, it's all watercolor. Good grief. And I looked at how he works. Oh, He's actually, yeah. he, he kind of keeps his pencils under there and just kind of floats the watercolor on top. I'm not really, I don't know anything about coloring or anything, but anyway, yeah. that's uh, crazy. That's mm -hmm. my serial killer board of uh, all the next book where I laid it all out on mm -hmm. thumbnails and nice. stuff. Yeah, so you're you're already working on book two then? Yeah, I'm working on two. Uh, using these, then I go and I'll pencil out um, I'll, I'll pencil out a page, but really small, and then I'll, I'll take a picture of it from a cool angle of like create a little more depth and then I'll draw it and procreate. And from there I print it out uh, every panel on its own board and ink it. So and scan it in and stitch it all together. That's incredible. A such, lot a, of, such a cool accomplishment with this thing, man. Mm -hmm. A lot of monotonous work, but it's fun. Well it everybody it. make sure you go follow Nick if you're not already. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah and if anyone on wants Instagram. If anyone wants to buy Axe Wilder John, uh, I'm ordering extra yeah. copies and they should be here in a few weeks. So uh, we're going to reopen the campaign so my wife doesn't kill me because the house is going <laughs> to be full of this book. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, Got to get those things shipped. That's a, that's a whole part of, of this process that people probably don't realize. I mean, some people do, but like just the shipping, the packaging. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, such, a, such a big task. Yeah. So Zoop, Zoop does take care of it. Like half of it's going to a fulfillment center, 1,800 oh. copies that we sold. But uh, but I ordered an extra like 1,500 copies to come to the house. Oh, I Just because it, it, it got the print cost down so low on the book if we ordered 3,500 copies. So I said, screw it. Let's go big. And so now I got way too many copies coming to the house. Wow, okay. That's cool that they take care of that. I didn't realize that either. I really got to look yeah. at Zoop. It's, they they take care of it, but they they like they're like the middleman between fulfillment centers, printers, interview shows, all that stuff. So they set it all up. Nice. Okay. But man, thank you for coming on. Mm -hmm. Awesome book. Big fan. I'm definitely gonna have to draw this character. I think Brent wants to too. We we should uh, have you back on the show at some point too, and you know maybe when you're doing book two or something, or when you launch that. That would be great. Be fun. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on. It means a lot. And uh, good luck on all y'all's projects. Yeah. And it's fine. It's finally nice to speak to y'all somewhat yeah. in person because yeah. you know, I've seen you guys from afar for like 20 years now. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of cool to hang yeah, out. That so. long. Yeah. It's really well, nice. Thanks, man. And thank you for reading reading my book. And, and Oh, yeah, yeah. It was cool, man. I love the monster designs in it. Like, I need to draw the intestine. His name's the intestine, right? Or what's yeah, it called? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The intestine, he's like, yep. he's like a Mojo character, you know. Like, I, and I, I worked on Mojo <laughs> a little bit for Marvel, so that oh, would be. Cool, uh, yeah. I think my ugly style's meant for characters like that, not Barbie, you know. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. No, you uh, would do an amazing job with it. I just wanted him to feel gross, and you know, like his fingers are bent back weird, and his mouth's all gross, and tongue, and all that stuff. Like, you would do amazing with that. Clearly, and bring <laughs> good, good luck finishing the rise and Renee. Whatever you're working on, I'm sure it's going to be incredible. <laughs> So, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's top Can't secret. Wait for so it's gotta out. be cool. Mm -hmm. So everybody, go support Axe Wielder John. Follow Nick everywhere because he's awesome. I mean, you already like his stuff. If you're here and you've mm -hmm. seen this, there's no way you're not going to go follow him now. <laughs> so, all right, that's the end of the show. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, everybody in chat. If you're here and you haven't yet, make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us everywhere. Go to our website, newquestcomics.com, get our books. That helps us be able to make these shows. 
And uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Oh, we got another comment. Maybe I should check that before we go. And my thing's all glitching out anyway, so I guess we're not ending it. Nope, just saying good night. Okay, good night, Adam. Good night. Oh, and here's Jeff saying, great show. Thank you, Jeff. Do a drawing challenge on every show. That Yeah, we kind of have been, so we'll probably be doing more of those. We have to think of some new ones. So yeah, if you have ideas. All right, bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye.